right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. The Boston Uprising just pulled off the huge upset over the NYXL with a 3-2 victory. And it seems like even with the roster changes, the Boston Uprising continue to roll. That is some true resilience from that team right there. All right, moving on to our next match, we have the Florida Mayhem going up against the London Spitfire. Now, the Spitfire, they've been a little bit out of character so far this stage, dropping their first two games. So this is a must win for them in order to stay in stage playoff contention. And the Florida Mayhem, they've also dropped their first two games, but they've been showing vast improvements over time. They got Sia player in the lineup. Now we're gonna see some awesome guy today as well. So uh, the Florida Mayhem, and the London Spitfire, this match might turn out to actually be a good one. We've already seen one upset so far, so hey, who knows? There might be another one in the cards. Anyways, you guys ready to get into this matchup? Yeah? yeah. Let's go ahead, send it on over to Puckett and the boys at the desk. Keep it going, Blizzard Arena. Shake the Sour Pitch. Sour Patch. It's Thunder patch. Six. Try and say that five times fast. Welcome back, everybody. It's Puckett. I got the sponsor plug out. It's time to intro my desk. We got Bren, we've got Crumbs, and so far, you guys are 0 for 1. On your predictions today. Listen, no Why? predictions. <laughs> that doesn't count. Why you got to act me like this? It's got to have There was no graphic. official predictions It's here. not enough. It was halftime. That's not how it counts. Let's take a look at the big picture for the day as we look at the full schedule. Malik hit it. We've already seen a major upset. The number one team that only had two match losses coming to today, well, they got their third one handed to them by Boston later. We got an epic showdown between the Fusion and Outlaws. That one always goes to a game five. But right now we find out, will we see back-to-back -back upsets as the Florida Mayhem take on the London Spitfire? Both squads are starting off this week at 0-2 after a struggle in week one. You have to think though, London had a tougher competition. They went game five against Houston and then they lost, of course, 0-4 to New York. But this is a squad that were champions. They took home stage one, and they should still be feared as one of the best in the league. I don't really know what to think about London at this point, because th this is a team that we constantly go on. Me, especially, I like to go on, especially about how this team has a whole ridiculous amount of talent across the board with these players, right? But they just seem to have problems sort of incorporating it into a good win. And yes, they won the stage one finals, but they're, they're losing games where they are supposed to be the favorites, in, right? Stage three has not been kind to them in the slightest. And I'm trying to piece together where the problem is well, starting to lie. I think I could tell you what's going on because remember that when London came into this, they were a two man squad, right? Two entire teams and they, they started getting rid of parts. So as yeah. they're trimming down the fat and figuring out where everything falls into place, you see a London Spitfire that is not necessarily at the peak that we expected them to be. However, they are still a top dog of the league. I'll agree with that. That can't be a starting lineup, can it, guys? I see Hago, Closer, and Bedosian seeing, all uh, this I'm good. seeing three supports there. That is not the starting <laughs> full lineup. Roster. That's just full roster. We should mention they <laughs> also have PZ available today. Will we see him for the first time? London is 0-2, but they've been in the running. They've been to both stage playoffs. Their opponent on the other side is still looking for some major wins. You look at the Mayhem, they're 4-18. But we've talked about it. They've been rebuilding and they've got a new staffed up roster. And today we're told we may see some new faces. Yeah, very exciting stuff. The Florida roster is looking especially spicy with these recent additions. In fact, you know, this is a team that, again, we've always picked up, right? We knew these guys were capable from the contenders days. And now they've introduced awesome guys, Sire player and Zappis most recently. And again, just a reminder, these are not the starters that we're going to be seeing in this game. But There's too many people for it to be two, starters. Yes, of course, what? of course. It's the whole roster. <laughs> but that's not the point I was making. Normally, it's the top six crumbs that is the starters. <laughs> yeah. In this case, it's not. But Sire Player is the man to realistically watch. They've already fielded him once. This guy is a, honestly a machine when he's playing in the right circumstances. He has a, a bit of an off day when he's been in his showings, but he has turned it around. And now it looks like as well they are going to be fielding over logics in this match here today. And the question remains as well, are they going to be using Awesome Guy as well? You know, he's recently here. Are they going to start to see it, sort of try and slot in these different pieces? and see if they can get a win and start to come back rolling. I have to say, I haven't been super impressed by Saya Player's Tracer, but his Widowmaker was amazing. If you watched him on Route 66, he was constantly flanking. That grapple hook takes him all over the map, and when he gets in position, he's going to land those headshots. Florida's the underdog today. London, though, is coming in without a win in Stage 3. So I want to get some predictions here. Already we've seen an upset. Friend, let's start with you. Are you leaning with the boys from the UK? Are you going with London? Ah. <sighs> 
I normally do, don't I? I normally you go with London, I, and in most cases, they are kind of sometimes the underdog. But today, I am going to be going with Florida Mayhem as a team that I'm going to be predicting. And I, I have I have reasoning for this. I, I hope I so. have reasoning. I'm not just, you know, They have four match side. wins all <laughs> They season. have four match wins all season. Yes, I agree. However, they've, re they've introduced two new players. I know for a fact that they're going to be running Awesome Guy as well as a starter. So they're replacing sort of the weak links in the team now. They're starting to get a bit of a solid foundation going. But it's not just that as well. It's the fact that London coming up on Saturday, they have to play against Philadelphia. And I think that they're going to get stuck in a trap game once again. London have done this in the past where they've, they've sort of practiced and I guess prepped too much for a team that they deem stronger. And then they slip up and drop the ball. And that's how they end up being upset by a lot of these other teams. So I actually think that this is going to be happening again. You know, it's called an upset what you're doing because you're upsetting my brain from what you just said. The Doesn't fact that, that you're saying that... <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you're okay, Florida right now, they're fielding two new players. On top of that, this the players have not really had any experience. London is you're banking on them messing up. I still think that this is a team that is tied for third or second place, and they're fielding their main lineup the entire Listen, way through. I, I never said it had to make sense. You just got to believe in what I'm saying. All okay. right, Bren. It's London. Bren's got London. the feeling for Florida. Crumbs is going with statistics and previous experience. <laughs> we'll see who is right today. <laughs> are you guys ready to meet our teams? It's time to get this match started. Let's bring out our first squad. They are your stage one champions. Give it up for the London Spitfire. Fifteen and seven overall. Got a chance to jump back up to number two on the leaderboard with a win today. Their first match win in stage three as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is a team that I, I have been disappointed with recently and how they've been performing. But this is their opportunity to upset my prediction. You know, to to get my my standards of play a little bit higher in mind when it comes to it because we know that they're capable of it. But the question is, how are they going to be able to you know start to rise to the challenge they're going to be placed with today in this game? And I did have the big question: Who are they going to? be running on support. It looks like it's closer. It's Hagopan back in once again. Gesture, we mentioned this guy, though, in the previous segment. Top five tank in the world. Keep your eyes on his Winston. I think you could even go as far as top two, but on your point on supports there, Pucket, I think it's interesting what they're doing by fielding this lineup of uh, Hagopian and closer, I think it makes a lot of sense against Florida Mayhem. I'd say that Mayhem right now is kind of struggling to figure out what their supports are supposed to be doing with the new tanks and new DPS, so it might be a bit of a weak area. You feel not necessarily the best supports you've got on display. See what they can do. Warm them up. You guys enjoy some powerful DPS. This is a duo to keep your eyes on. Profit and Bird Ring, two of the most versatile players in the league on one roster. That's a look at the starting lineup for the London Spitfire. It's time to introduce their opponents. Please welcome to the stage, the squad from Florida. It's your mayhem. To Mick, getting the boys fired up. Awesome guy is in the roster, friend. Your sources are better than slashers. Apparently so. I mean, I'm predicting these uh, these outcomes pretty pretty handedly. But again, no funny walkout today, and I am expecting big things from Florida. You know, these guys they got pressure on their shoulders because they want to be starting to mount this comeback now, and they still have they still have the opportunity. But to this team has game. never been affected by pressure. I mean, they keep a smile the whole way through. They've kept their mustaches as well. Stop hating it's on true, them on right? Twitter, on the mustaches, Listen. guys. It's a lot of pressure for these guys. Not everyone can get a fully groomed mane. I, I like it a lot, especially that beard right there from the, the captain, Zebasai. But we should hit on this. Swoosh, right? He was a former DPS player, transitioned into a main tank role. Never really got rated as one of the best in the league. Today, awesome guy is going to be trying to fill that main tank role, trying to fill those shoes. I want to see how you guys rate his play Especially, does he unlock some more potential with Saya player on that DPS? Uh, arguably running more Tracer today without Logics on the stage. He was a fantastic player back in the day when he was on Meta Athena. So I'm actually expecting and anticipating big things from him. Similar to the way that Gladiators, that whole roster was sort of overhauled with the introduction of Fisher. Yes, we know Fisher is tried and tested and it's a bit more of a gamble with Awesome Guy coming in, but I'm still nonetheless expecting well, quite quite large improvements coming out. From Realistically, the squad only we can only expect really crisp mechanical plays, but anything that requires complex synergy, I don't think is going to happen here with Mayhem. They still need time to gel. Guys. All right, that is a look at the starting lineup for the Florida Mayhem. We have Florida guy who drove 2,000 miles to watch this match. Let's see if his team can give him the victory. Bringing you the action today, we got Uber and Mr. Rex. 
Thank you very much. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Blizzard Arena. I see you out there, Florida guy. I know you cover a lot, <laughs> way, bro. Let's Florida hope this guy. is a big one. Yeah, Florida guy. I don't know his He's name. A, we we actually get his name. Well, I've, just just got I've been stuck in this room with you. Oh, well, just just for now. I mean, not, not that long. This is going to be a good match, though. I think Florida is going to be a little bit more coordinated than people expect with Awesome Guy and Saya Player. I think Saya Player will play a lot of Tracer today. I know in some of these maps, I think you'll see Tavik play that Sombra. And maybe we, I think actually, if you're going to need Widowmaker, you probably want Saya Player to play that. So you probably will see Tavik a decent amount on Tracer. Yep. When they want to run something like Tracer Genji, I think then you'll obviously see Tavik play Genji, Saya Player play that Tracer. I believe it was Ark that tweeted out, uh, you know, the first time yes. they were playing, he said, oh, Libero told me how good Saya Player is at Widowmaker. Because obviously Libero used to play with Saya Player back in Meta Athena. Uh, and he's like, but I didn't believe him. And then we got into game as New York against Florida. And I was like, oh my God, stop killing me. <laughs> so clearly, Sire Play is bringing something special that even someone like Ark is recognizing. Yeah, we've heard from a lot of people that his Widowmaker like ranks among the top. Obviously, you know, just new addition to Overwatch League uh, comes in. Yeah. You know, there's a mid-season it's, addition for It's Sire Player, Tsumi, and Linksa. <laughs> yeah. Top three. You heard it here first. Uh, those are your top three? Yeah, All absolutely. Right. 100%. Um, I mean, the first time I saw Awesome Guy play was two yeah. years ago. Uh -huh. March of 2016, they actually played an Alienware monthly melee tournament way back in the day, oh, yeah. dude. This is like early days when like ZP was out there doing the observing and stuff like that. It was great. They got <laughs> stomped in the first round, by the way. But then he returned six months later with Pine and Flower on his team. Now, I didn't know who they, they probably, were at the they time. They probably played a bit better then. They were playing on <laughs> NA servers and they wrecked them. They went perfectly through the bracket uh, and 3 0 in the final. I think it was against uh, Splice. In that last match, I don't think no Flame was on the team at the time. I think that was a little bit afterwards. So, so these guys played in the NA tournaments online. Awesome guy was one of them, and uh, he was a fantastic tank. Then, obviously, went to Meta Athena. We saw him compete there. Meta Athena has a little bit of a little bit of a disappointing end to their Apex tenure. But here we are. He's back. He's in the Overwatch League, and he's playing for Florida Mayhem. You know, uh, speaking to a lot of the guys on Florida, they say he's very easy to play with. I think you're going to see them you know, just kind of change a lot like how the Gladiators did when Fisher came into that lineup, right? Just change the overall play style of this team. You know, we haven't talked a lot about London yet. They'll be on offense first. Bird Ring will be running the Widowmaker. We know all the heroes that Bird Ring can play is phenomenal at them. Closer will be playing Mercy. Hagopun will be playing Zen. That is the big thing for me looking at this London Spitfire roster is the supports. It's been like the, the biggest dilemma that they've had throughout their yeah. Overwatch season thus far. Who do you play? Do you play Medotion and Nuss or do you play Hagopun and Closer? Uh, I guess Hagapun, based on that stat we've got down there, is kind of good in this matchup. Oh, Zup is in trouble here. He's trying to fend Bird Ring off and actually manages to survive. Fury's pushed back. Madison's able to get the D suit there. But Sire Player had already fallen. Two, of course, proper who gotten himself into the back line. Now we see the Florida Mayhem are trying to reciprocate and do the same to Bird Ring, but he's been pocketed by close. See Tavik just trying to put some pressure on the bird ring, not allowing him to just take these shots of these players sitting inside by that mega hell pack. See awesome guy just turned there for a split second, denies the opportunity yep. for bird ring to land that headshot as he comes in. So Winston has a smaller headshot hitbox than he used to, but you still see a lot of Winston players turn 180 when they oh. jump at people. Again, Zebo was so weak. Yeah, was Zebo this time, narrowly avoids getting eliminated, but for the second time in a row, Prophet locates Sire player and dispatches him with relative ease. He's close to a pulse bomb now, and this could be devastating. Transcendence or otherwise, he lobs it in, but Zebo is nimbly able to avoid it. Prophet will return to the point now, get a chunk of damage on towards Tvik, and then choose Awesome Guy. This is Prophet for you now, just to circle around the fights, but no considerable opening has been found yet. Florida Mayhem still stand tall. Sire player gets to come back and hopefully not die immediately to profit again. And look, I think a Swoosh obviously had a tough job as a DPS player who goes into a main tank role. We have so many great main tanks in the Overwatch League. Yes. So top to bottom. I, I think putting him in that role, obviously, well, I didn't see him play you know, up to the best of his abilities. I think, though, he is a very talented player. You do. So look at some of the Swoosh Genji clips that are out there. It's Saiyan player takes out Bird Ring. They'll try and go for a res here. Awesome Guy will try and push in. But I think, you know, how aggressive Awesome Guy is, I think you're going to see Manaton's play get much better as well. I think Manaton's been a very underrated D.Va player. That was excellent from Manaton, by the way. He just ran headlong into Closer and made sure that he couldn't get a full channel of the Resurrect off. So Bird Ring now has to walk all the way back. That buys you about 15 to 20 seconds now, based on how long it's going to take for Bird Ring to return. And Sire Player can see the man through walls now. So Bird Ring's put into a very limited sightline. 
And you can see that Sire player knows where he is at all times, but he's being jumped upon. Hagopin actually coming from the underside here, and the rest of the London Spitfire is set up on this high ground. Manaton has to drop down, but his defense matrix is, is essentially expired, and he will fall. The Spitfire eventually break in. How'd that go down? Well, I think you saw both teams use their Valkyrie. Zebosai actually falls during his... Then you know, the push starts to come in from London, right? They take real estate over by that mega health pack. You saw Bird Ring kind of like come up towards you know, the top area where Saya player is coming in. The Saya player doesn't even realize that he's getting flanked by the remaining members of London. See some changes come through for the Florida Mayhem. Now you say, okay, so when you want to play that Genji Tracer, like I mentioned, Vic will play Genji, Saya player will play Tracer. Bird Ring gonna play McCree here. Seeing a lot of McCree in this stage. Uh, very good against the flankers. A lot of teams running you know, two flankers at a time, whether it's you know, Sombra Tracer, Genji Tracer, just you need that flashbang to be able to take these guys down. Awesome guy getting chucked down there, Birdring a second too late on the flashbang. Sire player was able to recall out of that one, but awesome guy taking so much damage early on in the Primal Rage that he eventually had to run with those quick cooldowns on the jumps that he had available. So Manhattan heads up to the high ground here. Yeah, and Gesture and Fury jump right on top of Zebo and he's going for the res on the awesome guy. So like, like Manhattan did on that point A, they deny that res, you wait for your Winston to come back in. That'll be a pulse bomb that goes for nothing. Yeah, Manhattan manages to eat that just with the tip of the cone and now the Transcendence. Very well timed because Manhattan was getting pretty well hammered down in terms of his health. You can see that, well, Prophet's still hunting for Zemosai in the back line, and Birdrin setting up on the point here. Manhattan doesn't want to give this McCree any room to work, and Birdrin goes down. Awesome Guy leaps upon him. Both tanks from the Mayhem coordinate to die of the McCree, but Awesome Guy has finally felled by the Pulse Bomb of Prophet, and now they're looking for Tvik. The Genji's out of the picture now. Zemosai to fly across. He's discorded. He's down. Prophet's an easy finish off for him. Sire Player throws himself at the point, but the London Spitfire will have their two. Three minutes. 37 seconds left on the clock. A very good point A hold, however. Yeah, from the Florida Mayhem. I mean, they did a nice job. I thought Saya player against you know, Bird Ring in the Widowmaker uh, battle. Definitely got the best one. Bird Ring has a really odd first half. You know, one elimination, no final blows. It's really profit on Tracer. Yeah, I did. Bird Ring got hammered. Yeah, I mean, uh, profit on Tracer, you know, 13 limbs, six final blows. So putting, uh, putting a lot of those kills away there for the London Spitfire. You're gonna need, had a good round as well. Yeah, you're going to need Bird Ring to play much better, though, on the defensive side, right? If he gets beaten at Widowmaker Battle, uh, it's going to be much harder for Prophet to just kind of, like, dart around into the back line. You won't have the spawn advantage on point A as well, so definitely need to see Bird Ring get the better of Saya player here in our next half if you're a London Spitfire fan. And it was said, end of stage two, with London fell, you know, painfully short of playing even in that stage two title match as that Birdring was struggling a little bit with his mental stamina and fortitude and maybe even suffering from a little bit of it, tilt in some of those matches. It is frustrating, you know, going Widow versus Widow and constantly like losing that battle like he did in that match against Carpe. You, you, you just think, okay, now I'm going to grapple off, the, uh, you know, jump off the high ledge, and, right? And then you end up getting headshotted there. And then you come back, you think you change an angle, you think you have the shot on him. Maybe it doesn't hit, and then you get Snowballs headshot out of and control the enemy. Widowmaker gets some, you know, infrasight, <laughs> can see you coming. You and may I not find know this. It, it may just be like me, but I find like Widowmaker is a hero where you know, when you, there's a Widowmaker on the other team, and even if it's not working for you, you still you feel like you it. have to play it to just try to take that player out, especially because in this lineup for London, if they wanted to run Tracer Genji, they would probably flip these two, right? Oh, well, actually, I mean, they, Bird Ring can play some the Genji. Thing, the problem with that is that if you're playing Tracer Genji, you're playing Winston Diva most often, so you don't have a static shield set up, and you can get picked off by the enemy yep. Widowmaker before you even get the dive on. We see this oh. a lot on Temple of Anubis. It, interesting. Okay, so Zebo switches now, so now they'll have that mercy. I was going to say, they were, looked like he was on her for a little bit. Maybe just trying to throw a Biota grenade out. <laughs> Where? Playing at the front. Yeah, Where? I, I'm not really too sure. Just trying to make some sense of it, but switch is over to Mercy. You know, everybody thought Mercy would kind of get out of play once they nerf Valkyrie, but still, Valkyrie is such a good ultimate ability, and then just the ability to just pocket your Widowmaker or your Zenyatta, just keep them alive. So valuable. Note that, note that when Awesome Guy jumps back, you see Manaton then just come forward with that defense matrix. So. These two tanks for the Florida Mayhem working in tandem quite well. I spoke to Zemosai last week and he said it's unbelievably easy to play with Awesome Guy. He's slotted into this roster very quickly. It's a big he pick. says it's a dream. Yeah, great opening. Sire player fight hug up in there and it's going to be all over very quickly for the London Spitfire on point A. Tvik gets himself a bit of the action. Nicely done. You could see the first pick. Sire player getting picked off early. The response is the resurrect. They come back in and then Awesome Guy and Manhattan wait until 
The time is golden for the dive in, and it works beautifully off another pick from Sire. Well, for me, is when they take out Hagapun, then you had Awesome Guy and Manaton go right into the front of that Mega Health pack room. They deny any chance of a res. They know Tavik is all the way on that flank, but they have to deal with the tanks in their face. He actually comes on the flank, completes it, and they will finish off a few kills. Six minutes and 33 seconds on the clock. Tavik's got a pulse bomb. The infrasight for Sire player will be important when it comes to orchestrating the next push for the Florida Mayhem. Hagapun's been located on the point. He is not alone, but he's taken a lot of damage. Both DPSs from the Florida Mayhem left upon him. And there's a pulse bomb there from Tavik, combining nicely. Closer gets taken down by that one as well. Two for one, he won't say no to that. Now it's gonna be Bergerick trying to stay alive. Frustration surely starting to bubble to the surface as he shuts it off the point by Awesome Guy. Primal Rage, very, very good to open up this space. And now three players for the Mayhem sat on the point. Prophet is trying to get into the back line of the Mayhem in the opening, but everyone from Florida moves forward to benefit here from the Transcendent. Now they'll spread out once again, try and focus on def defending their supports at the very least. Closer actually got that Resurrect on Gesture. There's a lot of value there combined with his Transcendence. Yeah, they're gonna use the Self-Destruct though from Manitou on the point to clear it out. Just a little bit more percentage. The Florida Mayhem need to close this one in their favor. Saiyan player takes out Hagobin. That's both supports dead here for London. It's gonna be Bergering though with a Dragon Blade. Cuts through two. That's gonna be enough by the looks of things. Awesome guy finally removed from the point. Yes, closes. Broken body over there. Yeah. To Vic, blown up. To Vic's pulse bomb actually when it, when it took out Closer. So uh, Closer was getting attacked by Awesome Guy and he goes to Guardian Angel over to Fury and Fury's the one who has the pulse bomb on his back and blows that move. So, so unfortunate. Dan if you do and Dan if you don't. I know. Sometimes. We, actually, we saw that yesterday as well, multiple times on Kill of Anubis. I'm speaking like I know, like I actually play some Mercy at home. That's, I, I don't really know what that's you like. You do do it, but you just you just tend to grumble a little bit about it. That's all. <laughs> yeah, we, you, you can be coaxed into it, Matt. It's just... It's usually where I start to get passive-aggressive and blame. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Sire play for the best of us. And the worst, to be honest, more often than not. But <laughs> Sire play sitting back here. So, oh, Birdwig's in. Oh, good flash response. Birdwig's still able to get away. Sire play didn't get the fan hammer damage on him. And that's going to give a new lease on life. A stay of execution for Birdwing. He gets to toddle off back to his teammates. That's a big value resurrect. Again, those Winston's being back up. It's so important now. And look at him. Awesome guy doesn't need to be told twice, but he goes straight in. Prophet walks into the crosshairs of Sire player. I don't even know how he found that. And now Jester's up on the point trying to stay in it. Awesome guy with Primal Rage knocks Jester away. And now the London Spitfire. Winston has to go for the Primal Rage himself. But the Transcendence was there. Sire player is being pocketed right now. Zavasai keeping him up on his feet. Now the Mayhem will have to regroup for this because they've been knocked around a bit, but they're going to come back. Tavik going down to Hagapun though is not a great sign, but Sire player is connecting with the McCree shots. Profit falling. Sire player goes for the flash, but it was a bit of a bait out there by Fury who yeah. didn't actually advance on him. Nah, just not enough players alive there for Florida to make that happen. They had a chance, Mitch. You know, Manatin goes in after Awesome Guy falls. They're able to take out Gesture. Oh. And then they get the res on to Awesome Guy. He dives right in, uses right the Primal in. Rage, knocks closer away, not able to get that Resurrect. Almost had it. Florida did use a lot of ultimates, so they invested pretty heavy. This next fight's going to be pretty much a wash, right? Valkyrie plus Dragon Blade would be very difficult for the Spitfire to lose this. Profit now, can only look on as much of the high ground play uh -oh. is occurring. Zaya gets burned, bring it again. The Genji's struggling to make any all sort of inroads against the Florida Mayhem, especially with the Flash in play. Hagopun though again, Tavik dashed away from Profit, and then he gets caught out. Nicely done. Now Prophet doesn't really know how to proceed here. There's only Jester off to the side. Fury gets de mecked and Prophet's trying to join in the pulse from there. Doesn't really amount to too much. Gesture down. Who's going to be on the point for the London Spitfire? The answer is just Fury. Prophet throws himself at her. He's down. The Dead Eye was there just as an insurance policy. But the Florida Mayhem are only about 30 seconds behind in time bank. Already looking like a completely different team. It's just how it's, it's crazy, I think. You, know, you could see a lot of different players like just be moved around on rosters, but like, does it? At least I feel, at least from watching a lot of these games and just the teams that we've seen so far in Overwatch League, the, the, the level of main tank play uh, just definitely boosts the roster the most. I think it's also tied to a lot of teams using main tanks as callers. I think just being able to see the game differently than maybe some other main you tanks, not bringing in a different point of view. You can go back even further than that, though. This is common knowledge, and this isn't sort of having a go at uh, the NA scene, but a lot of American pro players have often said we don't have a large pool of main tank players at the top level here. <clears throat> Excuse me, Korea has always been known for strength of tanks and support, yeah. especially, whereas the West is definitely, you know, given a lot of respect in terms of the DPS caliber, at least a large amount of top level DPSs they can offer. So, you know, Florida comes in here, they bring in obviously this main tank 
from Korea with a lot of experience and yeah, it can make a big difference. Europe suffers from some of the same issues in, the, in that regard in terms of main deck pool. Um, and I don't know who was saying to me before, it might have been, um, I was on to in conversation, just maybe that sort of Korean players at least initially looked at Overwatch much more like a MOBA in terms of yeah. positioning, coordination and things like that. Whereas in the West, you definitely saw a bit more of a TDM kind of approach until people started to really learn the game. To begin with, the West was ahead of Korea. It didn't last long though. It, the tanks kind of set the table for everybody else. They protect the supports, they buy the DPS enough space to do the work. So Cash. the game's really to start and end with that main tank play. It's getting harder to be a main tank though, Matt. Oh, Changes in Overwatch, it's getting brutal. Especially with Sombra on live and Fugita and stuff like that. We'll have right. to see them adapt. Uh, you know, the new, the new May and Reaper. Oh yeah, you want to clean through, want to clean through tank. Yo. It's not the patch we're using here, obviously. But. Jeff, I'm just saying, bro. That's uh, it's pretty cold of you to do that. Bettering drops down, to be chasing on. Don't know who Bettering got the headshot on then. I don't think he knows either, but right now when he's to jockey back a little bit, Awesome Guy really getting in the doorway. He, uh, yeah, see Florida were actually sitting quite a ways back from where Awesome Guy was. He was deep. Sayapai did get the pick on Bettering, but follow up, there's none. Well, well, I think actually Awesome Guy thought that Sayapai was going to be watching that back left corner by the building, and he was. It's just he, he saw Bird Ring up on the high ground, took the shot on Bird Ring, and then Prophet darted around the bottom side, and he was able to come around and finish him. Can't resist a bit of pigeon shooting sometimes. All right, we'll see. Well, so it's fixed Pulse Bomb here. If they can corral the Spitfire back into that one of those low rooms, this Pulse Bomb can get a lot of value. And they've given up this flank to, to Vic many times. This is how they broke it so yeah, fast. They're not first time. Right better. back in here. Yeah, they, they, they let him okay, one click. every time. There it is. Hargo beneath the Pulse Bomb. It's Vic is on a running riot. Awesome guy's already gone down. But losing Hargo and Bird Ring here is a lot of damage and a good chunk of healing missing, especially given the closer can't heal everyone at the same time. Tavik opts to sit back a little bit. Hagu's brought back into the fight, but so is Awesome Guy. Both teams replenishing their rosters by one. Valkyries for both Mercies here. Tavik's locked in a deadly duel with Prophet out in the periphery, and he's winning it for the time being. Gesture leaps onto the point. Sire plays waiting for a clear shot with a transcendence there. We can still find clean kills. His infrasight told him that Birdring was waiting for the pick, but a double crossbow from Prophet. Nicely done. Manaton and Zebo were down, and Sire player being cleaned up. Couple of individual brilliance moments there for the Spitfire map. As they shot the Florida Mayhem off. Yeah, they're able to hold on, and Florida used everything they had at that moment. I wonder if we see a switch to just something like a, a straight dive here, but to see Prophet's double pulse bomb here. Sorry, drops it on the ground. Straight up on the ground. Okay. Sometimes landmines work out here. If you're, if you're trying to stay close to a transcendence, I guess that makes sense. So they've given this flank to Tavik yet again. This is where he made the big play the last time. See if he can do it again here. They managed to He'd Letting him go all the way around and just flank the support. Look at this left side. The gesture is also on the left side there. So that, that flank has kind of been given up in a sense. You can see he gets straight into the cookie jar, man. Immediately. Zaya play with three though. What is going on? He, he has to back out. There's nothing he can do here. I mean, gesture has had to put so much focus on the Zaya player that everybody else on the team has been taken out. Okay, well, I, I understand that we didn't see that because I don't think anyone would have expected him just to pop off like that. We saw that Jesse was in a position to really do some damage, but one man breaks the Spitfire down with an amazing brace of three kills. Give me that replay now! Oh yeah, let's take a look at this. Right before that final point comes up. The shot on the burning, that is so <laughs> filthy there from Saya player. Okay, so... In Florida, there's going to be a change that comes in for London. They're going to have Bird Ring play Genji here, because you really look at this as like one fight. Right. Florida needs to extend this long enough for Zebo to get Valkyrie. Then you think that you can keep Zupe alive long enough to get his Transcendence, and then you'll also have a self-destruct and Primal Rage to extend this point. Zvik again. Pulse Bomb shenanigans. Oh, I want to field goal pretty hard. Hagapin, though, a lot of pressure being put on him with the micro rockets of fury and able to declare to Vic. And no. No, it won't be the Mayhem getting themselves another tick. I didn't quite have the time. That Pulse Bomb could have been just the ticket, though. Yeah, it was the dive from London that went all the way into the back line, and Manitin had to make a decision whether to use the Matrix to go and try and protect Awesome Guy into Vic over by the point, or try and keep the supports up. At that time, you're trying to farm up that Transcendence because you already had popped Valkyrie, so he makes the decision to go back to the supports, which Probably the right decision. That's reasonable. Yeah, though. right decision during that. It's just an awesome guy in Tavik can't get any of the healing for the Valkyrie because they have to keep Zupe alive. They're not able to keep those guys alive by the point. They end up getting off it. And you can see on this particular patch, Diva's Burst is still at its premium. Probably the highest it will ever be, I'd say. 
Uh, she's had her damage reduced by about 21% overall Across now. The with the, yeah. yeah, so the impact damage of the micro rockets on live, as well as the actual explosive damage, has been reduced, plus the boop -y boop damage when she charges in. <clears throat> so right now, on this patch, though, she still shreds, and we saw Tafik get eviscerated. And hey, look, uh, you know, D.Va, I think, is the most played hero in the highest percentage in Overwatch League and right now. It's like top 90, damage, top 98%, limbs. right? I think... I think I saw McGravy the other day uh, tweet out. He's like, you know, uh, I, I don't mind playing D.Va, but I'd like to play a little bit more Zarya, some more Roadhogs. I think it's great. You can, I think you'll see some more of these other off tanks come into the game. I mean, you are you we are looking some, at a Tracer player who had to yeah. go and play D.Va. So I uh, we, we have some sick Zarya players in the league. It'll be real fun once Zarya but comes back into the meta strong. It'll be that Widowmaker battle between Saiya player and Bird Ring yet again. So I know. Bardo is able to take this first point, not able to complete anything there on point number two. There is... Oh! Looks like he got hit in the shoulder. He'll get resurrected, but in the meantime, the Spitfire is going to move in, knowing that Sire player doesn't have any oversight of this situation. That Widow battle, there's so much riding on that one. Bird Ring wins it again, though. Sire player going down, and it looks like the Spitfire are taking no prisoners here. Martin, desuited, almost looked like he hardly put a scratch on the back line of the Spitfire. And now Prophet can just stretch his legs and lean into the back line. And that'll be an easy cap here. It hasn't been pretty for Bird Ring in map number one. Yeah, Saya players doubled him in eliminations in final blows. Just, uh, you know, a little bit more damage, but when it matters, right, Bird Ring comes through. It'll pick up both kills on that Widowmaker. Unlock point A. See if London can take point B, get a map win here. Yeah, it does help that Hagapun has had uh, a very eight, good game. Eight final blows there yeah. on that Zenyatta. It's a very crucial pick. He is looking very. You know, we would normally talk about Fedosin as the big boy in the Zenyatta role on this team. A profit. That's the pulse bomb. This is the snowball effect we often see on this particular map. If an attacking team gets an easy first clear, they'll have ultimates come up quicker. And the pulse bomb has allowed them to break open this fight. And the mech has managed to is kicked out of it now. Evicted, in fact. Hagapun falls to Tafik in the back line, but Bird Ring turns around and deals with a pesky ninja who had managed to penetrate into the cloisters of the back line. Zebesai now going in for the Valkyrie here. Double support ultimates being used in desperation for the Florida Mayhem. They bring Sire player back into the fold. They have to hold on here, but Hagapun's not giving him a choice. Awesome guys felled yet again. Yeah, you do have a self-destruct here from Manhattan. Goes way deep. It's going to take out Bird Ring, so you don't have to worry about that Widowmaker in the back line. You see Gesture just trying to put some more pressure, trying to push players back here. But I think Florida is going to be able to stabilize. Prophet backs away. Manitou now getting taken very, very low. Notice the cheeky Zebesai back around the corner, trying to heal the Diva up. But unfortunately, he couldn't out heal the damage from Prophet, bearing down at a rate of knots on the Diva. Zebesai is removed from the situation, but Zuber actually finds his fourth kill for this map. Make it five. Now the Zenyatta for the Florida Mayhem is starting to get involved a little bit more. And not a moment too soon. You know, from what I say, I think they're going to stabilize. The fight goes for like another like 25 or so seconds. It's just Fury, Profit, and Gesture with no supports going up against like five members of the Florida Mayhem. Able to stay alive, even to make that like a competitive fight, it's just insane. The fact that they, in doing so, they force out important ultimates that Florida needs to kind oh. of sandbag against this flood. To be fair, London did use a lot of ultimates here. This should be a fight oh. that Florida wins. Oh. The Dragon Blade comes through takes out two players, so okay. you know, London won't be able to make anything out of this. That's a super high-value trade for Tvik. Yeah. One Dragon Blade to win a team fight. He did identify correctly that Hago and Closer didn't have their ultimates available, so one Dragon Blade invested, that's huge. Especially if you're going to switch and play Junkrat here. I think you're going to play Junkrat here, obviously, for his burst damage potential against somebody like a McCree who walks in pretty slow. Also, you're able to build up Riptire rather quickly, so you'll actually get a chance of getting that ultimate yet again, where you may have not gotten another Dragon Blade. It depends on how that next fight would have went. It's another game of uh, pin, the, pin the grenade on the main tank, I think. Sire player wants to get in a tickle fight with Gesture. Just, just having none of it. Just makes it a little bit more costly for Gesture to use that Primal Rage and go all the way in the back as well. Oh no, he's not been noticed. Hugger might be in trouble! <laughs> oh, dude! He rolled straight into Hugger Pit Burnering with the one that got pulsed by the Sire player! Tackling and rubbing his hands together, he knows he's struck a very nasty blow. And the Spitfire now have one more chance. Again, value. A couple of ultimates being committed to win a fight straight up for the Mayhem and the Spitfire. Bird Ring switching and off. They don't have much to work with, Matt. And a lot of good ultimates for Florida to stall this out. Closer uses the res, so you know there's not going to be any res potential here. Gesture's going to be the one that has to get the touch. And Manitin actually body blocks him off the point. He barely makes it there, though. What's someone think of the supports? Awesome guy zoning them out here. It's tough for the healers of the Spitfire to even access the point right now. On his own, he's got Hagapun 
Burdering's been taken down as a self destruct on the point. Zamasai giving healing on the high ground, but he got too close to his little pair. Double pulse bomb kill from Prophet. Now it's Vic, he's up on that high ground. Prophet's on the point being pocketed, and so is Fury. A self destruct. Give a couple brief moments of zoning a chance to take a breath from Manhattan as he resuits. Fury's down. He lost his mech to that self destruct, and also guys a primal rage. Someone asked for a rip tire. There it is. The hold. It's a draw. Both teams prevent each other from taking point B on the second run around. Now this has turned out to be quite the stout. Uh, it's a very close map number one between these two teams. Really could have gone either way, but a draw. I think Florida will take that. But Mitch, you know, when, when another player on the other team has like a little bit of an off game like Birdring had, you know, where he doesn't have the greatest of games on you know, his Widowmaker and Genji, you gotta win those. I feel like you're not gonna see another game like that out of Birdring for the rest of the series. Florida may have let a map slip here. Map two, guys, right around the corner. This is the Overwatch League. See you in a sec. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. Omened by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. And by Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League. The damage available. And Boyer has so much ability to be able to just get away from players like Lynxer on the Tracer. Now, getting very close, building up the old, and there it is. Oh, okay, the Coalescence coming out here. Jay Hong's just giving the Houston Outlaws. They've got oh. hosing down. Oh, they're clean indeed. But that push from Seoul was nothing but dirty. unit together here. London Spitfire looking for the fight. Still poking, still prodding. They're so close to pulling this off. Florida Mayhem, these kills might do it. And yes! And Prophet just going crazy here on this Tracer. Nick and Logic's combined for two huge kills. But London Spitfire, the two big kills coming through. Yet again, Florida Mayhem pulling ahead. Oh, this could be big. Hanging on by a thread. 
Now, if I had have showed you guys the card for this particular match prior to the season, uh, or this stage starting, you may not have thought too much of it. But with the recent changes to the Florida Mayhem, they're looking vastly more competitive, man. Yeah, and they were already looking pretty good before they added awesome guy and Saya player. They ended think, stage two well. Yeah, towards the end of stage two, I thought they started to definitely hit their you know, right stride. They started to improve. You, know, you see map one obviously resulting in a draw, showing you it is a very close match. Some changes coming in for London Spitfire, though. They're changing a lot of the players here up. It'll be three new players coming yeah. in. They're getting a slap on the hand of being sent into the corner, I think. Yeah, a couple of uh, changes up in the support sense here. But Ocean's back. Big boss, at least for the London Spitfire. As Fantastic far as they're Zenyatta player. Although, although Hagapun did have a very good map number one, though, I think we definitely can note that Nuss will come in closer. Looks like, oh, hey, oh what's up? He's, he's, Close uh, enough. You to that. You <laughs> lower that camera a little bit. Uh, Wu Yao will come in for Fury too. Okay, I dig this. So Wu Yao generally, I mean, Yiska said Yiska had a different way of putting this one. Uh, another analyst uh, for Overwatch, but I think he's just the more aggressive uh, diva on this yeah. team. Fury, despite his namesake, is actually not as an aggressive diva. Definitely more peel oriented. Um, Bidos. He's definitely been in the conversation for best Zenyatta well, in the league, I think. Well, when you put Bidoshin in, uh, Zenyatta, who can really defend himself at close range, you don't need as much feel from that debuff, so, right? Yeah, so you slap just, him with the Omnic hands, yeah, get off it, my just, property. <laughs> you can just have Nuss just pocket him with the uh, Mercy Beam, and you know, Bidoshin will take care of some of those people diving in towards that backline. Yeah. Do you know what Nuss is German for? No. Nuts. I don't know any German, so that I, don't, I don't know any, any of that. Yeah. Okay. NUS. Well, we're just waiting for some of the guys to get in the lobby. The next map will be Nimbani, though, coming okay. up. Uh, I think London, you can see them go for a full dive on defense. Uh, remember back to stage one, Birdring players are really nice soldier. 76 on the defense can kind of makes you really think like where he is on that high ground, just changing locations all the time. He's not a really easy player right. to figure out. I love I love soldier 76 play because you think of a tracer, right? And I feel like tracer's skill set gives her the most diversity in terms of like how your style can shine through. 76 is pretty straightforward. You'd be very familiar with that arch type, Matt. You know, oh, he's, yep, got a, yep, yep. he's got a, you know, he's got a rifle. He runs around, yep. you know, kind of heals his step around. Yep. Sprints, you know what I mean? I don't think there's a jetpack. I don't think they put that one in. Maybe in Overwatch 2. But uh, uh, generally speaking, we see a lot of those players try and play in a nuanced fashion. 76 has good damage output over time. Helix Rock has good burst. But it's a simple designed hero. But the way in which some of these players use it is quite interesting. Yeah, it's like a, a hero that I feel it's like, I don't want to say easy to play, but definitely one of the easier of Easy the defense to learn, hard to Yeah, it's hard to master, right? Uh, you know, being a very good 76, because you're such a target. It's a little like McCree, right? You're just standing there. You're kind of not obviously not as stationary as McCree, but a lot of the time as 76 is spent running away from people, getting wow. set up again. It's also back. after the first four shots, you're sending bull bullets like air mail to Timbuktu because of the spread. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it does take uh, composure to make sure that you manage your bullet spread. I say the same for people that use McCree right click all the time. You know who you are. Florida has some uh, interesting things they can do on offense, uh, to, depending on what they want to run. You know, Tavik could play like a Genji, he could play a Farah on offense, uh, you could play something like Sombra Tracer if you want I wanted. like Farah defense on this map, like we see from the NYXL. Yeah. I think that there's uh, there's a lot to be said for it. There's a place for that. Yeah, you can you can sort of play in a way defensively as far in this map that doesn't give an enemy Widow any good sight lines, because there's only really one place that they can peek from. Kind of reminds you about uh, when we used to see Farah on defense on Iconball Attackers back in stage in one. In right? yeah. I know a lot of teams. Went to that over Junkrat uh, towards what. the later part of the stage. In the future, we're going to get a little Telestrator in here so we okay. can draw things on this map uh, and just like indicate yeah. some stuff. Let, let's do that uh, in Season 2. That'll be fun. I will do my best not to draw obscene things on it, but let's uh, let's get it. Because it'll be fun. And yeah, most Talk likely I'll be drawing on it. Yes, I will. Yes, you'll probably... I'll probably not be allowed to draw on it yeah. at all, actually. Let's do that, though. Um, hold, you can hold me to that one. We'll make it happen. It'll be fun to like try to look at how these guys set up because the Spitfire here... Moira? Ooh, kind of like the San Francisco Shock setup with Sleepy on this map, on the attacking Moira. Usually you run Moira with a Sombra. Yep. Usually you maybe put a, <laughs> put a few different uh, tanks in the lineup. But Bidoshin, gonna use the Moira. To tell me you're gonna play really close on the point with Moira Lucio. You're gonna play really, you know, kind of stuck to this corner. We see a lot of teams do this now. Instead of going to the high ground, you see the, the fade going in. Really nice plays here from Bidoshin. You see what Moira brings, right? Just the damage and then the ability to just heal numerous people up very fast. And it's very easy to use a Biotic Grasp to recharge your healing capacity because Bidoshin is positioned behind his tank line. As you can see, it's not exactly the most aim intensive ability. Still harder to use than Symmetra's beam. Left click, you know who you are. Uh, so, you know, he can set up there, get very good healing across pro close proximity. And it's tough for Florida to try to jump on top of them when they're definitely going to be out healed. 
I mean, just that first fight. You say Bidoshin, he takes part in five eliminations, which means, you know, putting damage on, you know, five different people. And also, and also heals for 70% of the team's damage that, that was taken fight, in that first fight. So Granted, they are using a Lucio, so perhaps right. at that time may have been speed boost, but still. But you see a lot of, you can get by with Moira as the main healer in that kind of composition. Right. It's a... Rejoice, Moira di remains. Different than, like, a Mercy, right? You can only heal one at a time. You want the Moira to provide that healing to everybody. Coalescence here coming in for Bidoshin. Gonna use it right away. Time for a hose and down, Zephyr Not even your beads gonna get you out of that one, mate. Prophet jumping in. Birdring and Wuya were there as well, so this is really not much to be said. That was a clean deflect on that Helix Rocket. Straight back to Sire player. It's gonna look like he's uh, just failed the science experiment there after that one. Hair blowing everywhere. <laughs> So the Spitfire there, not much to be said there, Matt, really. It's just a first pick there on uh, on Zebesai. Good charge in. Dash from Profit. And all you do is use Coalescence. You're going to have Blade, Primal Rage, Pulse Bomb for the next fight. Because Saya Player plays Widow at the beginning, not really close to a tactical visor right now. So they need to keep Zebesai alive through this next fight. You're going to need that Valkyrie to get through it. <laughs> See the setup now is the, the Mayhem drop down. But look who's waiting, Birdring. He's seen Tvig, Tvig's also seen him. He's noticed him noticing that he's been noticed. Prophet, after reflex. He can't really reflect the nuclear fallout, my friend. That's not really how it works. Otherwise, Mad Max wouldn't have been a thing. Zebesai brings Manaton back up. And Birdring's actually retreating back to his own team. So it's a bit of a semi-disengage for the time being for the Spitfire. They've been shoved off the payload, in fact. It's about as good as you can get, though, for Florida, because they ended up using their Dragon Blade Impulse Bomb during that fight, so... You can come into the next one if you need it. You can use your transcendence you've held on to. Jester will have primal range. She'll jump right on top of Zuppe. That transcendence comes out instantly. It's going to be sound barrier used by the London Spitfire. And that's a tactical vibe that comes through for Sire player. Just trying to chunk down some damage here on a gesture. Hatch, look, I mean, so much of his field of vision was filled up by gesture there with it. So we had no choice but to use the tactical visor on his monkey asylum. That's a self-destruct. Sire player knows it. Sees the icon. Can't get away. We all places that very well. He's going to be hastily resurrected and brought back into the fight. And the numbers, to be honest, are favoring the mayhem. They still have six players around the payload right now. And this team has always been good at doubling down defensively. But it, they've, they've kind of struggled in the past against the raw pace of dive teams like the Spitfire. So this is an improvement. Well, let's see how they use this coalescence. I think that's the one thing we haven't seen a lot of teams really figure out with Moira yet is the timing of this coalescence. They're going to use it, just follow it up with their divers, right? Just push it right back onto Florida, put down the damage and the healing. Try and knock them back a little bit. And they actually do get awesome guy with that coalescence. So yeah. picks up a kill. Great pick off. Zebeside, can he get the resurrect? He can. Wuyal punishes him for that. So we need to see what awesome guy can now do while he's lacking a yeah a pocket from Zebeside. The answer is not a whole lot. So London spent a whole lot on starting that fight in terms of ultimates that you sort of call lessons cut across. But they got the first pick. And from there, the rest is history. Four minutes and two seconds on the clock for the Spitfire to finish Numbani. You know, a lot of times, though, when we do see a team take point A, they usually roll through that streets phase and take point B. So you saw two good defenses there for the Mayhem. You know, four minutes, a lot of time, but it is doable on defense here in this final stage. Prophet will have a Dragon Blade, though. They're going to have to hold on to this Transcendence. The last time, Gesture jumped right on Azufe. Use a Transcendence instantly. You're going to have to see him hold on to it a little bit longer. Yeah, Manaton actually peeled back and self-destructed back towards his team's spawn. So it might be just to protect his back line or just keep the tanks away. That may have worked. Either Spitfire well, haven't really yeah. committed to this fight yet. If Jastro jumps in, he can't jump out and that self-destruct comes through. Well, he's jumped in. He's down to half HP. Manaton wants to chase him down, but it's the Coalescence yet again. Bidosin now sort of mostly using it for healing, as you can see. Just landing on Jester as he came down. Sire playing out with a tactical visor yet again. He can't really get past the monkey. Jester jumps away, drops a bubble on his way through. And Sire player has the rest of that ultimate sort of cancelled out. The self-destruct doesn't really amount to too much, except for the DC on Manaton, and Tvig was there to pick out the pieces. Even Manaton in Bunny Blaster form finds Prophet. Love to see it. Yeah, Prophet doesn't get an opportunity to use his Dragon Blade. Zippe did use Transcendence, but... We'll have Valkyrie in this next fight to be hunting down Bird Ring. You don't able to take him out, so. You don't feel bad using Trans as Zuppe now, especially because Bidos has been forced to switch yeah. off, the D, uh, off the Moira to his own Zenyatta. And, and, you, and you have to run Percy here. So actually, now knowing that you have all these changes come through, you don't feel bad about it for Florida. Because you're changing out both of your supports, so you're still going to have a little bit of an advantage in terms of you know, Zen. Well, I mean, with the way Bidoshin's putting down damage right now, I mean, he's actually you know, going right over Zupe. It doesn't really yeah. matter. Bidoshin kind of does that. <laughs> Some of his damage yeah. numbers have far exceeded Jonark in particular games. 
This guy's very, very good at it. Yeah, I haven't seen the other players in this league, man. I tell you what, they are fantastic. Prophet Dragonblade forced to do a block early, but still manages to cancel with a dash. He was hoping to get one more hit on Zebesite. But failing to do so means that not only Zebesai is back to full health, but Tavik is himself. Awesome guy goes in, that's a self-destruct to follow up. This could be nasty, it's gonna be the underpass! Prophet again falls to a self-destruct, and Madison got the D-suit. So Birdring now switching over towards the McCree here. He's been on that for the prior fight. What's he looking to try and do with McCree? I think he's looking to just try and uh, he'll put down some consistent damage on the awesome guy, really punish him when he comes on through. Also, Tavik has actually had a pretty good game on Tracer, really being a nuisance in that back line. He's making me eat my words. I, I kind of said yeah, well, he used to be the, the starting Tracer, and he's had a really good series. So, I, fair, fair play. Okay, so this tells you now that from London that their composition, that they're set up, they're going to play a little bit slower. They're trying to take advantage of this aggression that's coming for the Florida Mayhem. So now you have Prophet play Junkrat here towards the end of this map with Birdring. You can get a lot of good dead eyes here in the final stage of this map as well. Don't rule that out. Oh, Pulse Bomb got eaten there. To be couldn't connect that one. A bit of pretty juicy, despite the fact the Transcendence was there. A Pulse Bomb on an Orisa, uh, you know, in a trance is not going to get the kill, but he was hoping that, that someone else would step close enough to gesture to, you know, be caught out by that one. His attack visor now, a little bit hard, but cyberplay has got a great angle to sort of get above that Orisa shield to a degree, and it's sort of forcing Nuss to stay in the underpass. However, doesn't find any kills, and now all six players are just Spitfire able to move forward. The Mayhem have to be very quick to get on the point. They've only got a couple seconds to do so. Madison's got to run, but the hole actually slowed him down. He couldn't get there in time. Nicely done by Gesture. Throws out that Orisa right click. And it wasn't eaten. To Madison, if he'd eaten that, he would have been Gucci. Would have got on the point. And the difference in that first half for me, you know, everybody's stats kind of like, uh, you know, about similar across the board. <laughs> Except for Bedoshin and Zupe. Uh, you know, Bedoshin, you know, he contributes to 16 kills, three final blows. Yeah. Zupe only three. And uh, you know, Bedoshin has one less death. And, uh, you know, ultimate charge time, obviously big for supports, right? Almost charging it like 30, 30 seconds faster than Zupe. That's a huge advantage. Hey, even towards the end, I mean, some almost double him up in Transcendence. Yeah, also, like, the reason why he'd have a lot of kill participation is because he'd be using Biotic Orb to get a lot yeah. of free damage. But let's see how it went down. So this is the whole... Yeah, okay, so Mountain... Oh, he, he does eat it. No, sorry, he stops to eat it. Doesn't get there in time. So, by correction, there you go. Very, very small thing. The orb was eaten, but Manhattan still had to sort of back up a little bit. Half a second cost him the delay. We'll see what Florida Mayhem decide to run on offense here. Like I mentioned, a lot of options, a lot of different things you can do with these two players in the game. I know a lot of us really want to see that Saga player uh, logics combination. Yeah. No, eventually we will. You know, logics uh, has been very all... good on Tracer and Widow, but Tavik has played well today. The thing is, uh, and this is really important, with awesome guy and Saya playing now joining the team. In this particular setup for Florida, much of that initial um, English-speaking communication structure is there. I know for a fact that logics on on the mayhem. He's not a super loud, super communicative person. It's not sort of how we like to play the trace. We like to receive direction all the time and act on information given instead of deliver it himself. So having, like, Tvik always tells me about how important communication is. I mean, it sounds like a broken record. So this setup of the team, is my understanding, gives them better communication than yeah. if Logix was in Tvik's spot. That's the, that's the big difference. Yeah. Just trying to uh, make it a little bit easier to get everybody into this roster and working the right way. On defense, uh, we mentioned no bird ring, very good. At 76, he'll play Widowmaker here, but the same kind of responsibilities when you have that Mercy and Pocket up on that high ground. So it looks like a... You gotta bring okay, those so, bankers, that's so the responsibility. Changes coming in here for Florida, interesting. Saya player gonna go off of Widow. He'll play Tracer here, so you just wanna go full out dime. It's interesting they wouldn't stay on Widowmaker because the player is kind of, you know, the better of Birdring in a lot of those engagements. You know, he's not opting into the Widow versus Widow, so maybe he's, you know, they're throwing a different uh, tempo of play at the Spitfire. Maybe they're not ready for it, or maybe Prophet just gets the immediate DC on Madison, and that's fine. And maybe he just kills awesome guy after. That could be, that could happen as well. <laughs> it, it, it seemed like, you know, Madison went all the way deep, and awesome guy wasn't there with him at all. It was, uh, it looked like it was just Saya player there. He was trying to put some pressure on a Birdring, and it's uh, pretty easy in that position for Nuss to just hold that. Healing beam on a Birdry and keep him up, even throw a Harmony Orb on him. And Prophet on the other side of the map, you know, guys, Manhattan's coming on out, able to get that demon. Right, so we, we saw it from Manhattan's perspective there. We could, yeah. you could see it was pressuring Birdring, but when you're you're pocketed as a Widowmaker, you can generally out-heal Diva damage unless she's literally <laughs> right up in your grill. Sayo player still behind him, by the way. Okay, let's see what he does from that position. Yeah, he is, he's actually right around that uh, left-hand side. 
Profit though, also guys in trouble. Uh, even the health pack's not gonna save him from that. It's only 200 HP, it's 400 HP damage for Zumpe. Good response, it's a trade and it's gonna be really tough to get the resurrect on Profit from that position. Nas will have to risk trying to get past Zumpe in order to do so and you can see he's not even bothering to go for it. Wu Yang, defending gestures to try to go for the Winston 1v1. Not quite the gentleman's duel between those two, but I don't think London are really interested in that at the moment. Gesture finds up there. Now, Muyar's gonna drop in. Madison there to receive him, but he just bypasses it. It's not a bad fight for Florida, though, Mitch. They get London to invest both the support ultimates into it, but that shot from Birdring on to Vic probably ends Florida's chances of making something happen there. But Florida has a great opportunity in the next fight. They come back with both support alts in Dragon Blade. They just need to get good value out of that blade. It was a, you know, a pretty big thing for Florida. They were able to have Bidotian end up using that transcendence towards the later half of that fight. It's interesting, because there's no Widowmaker present on the Mayhem, uh, firstly, Birdring doesn't have to win the 1v1 in that regard, but also London don't really need to dive too deeply. Huh? Florida are going to come to them one way or another, just like this, and they can just sort of counter-dive that. Sound barrier, though, five players from the Mayhem get it. Zuppe's hanging back, as he tends to do, but he's fixing them with a Dragon Blade, gets two, dash through Wu Yao, will claim the Diva after he was desuited, and they're just going to mosey on back to the point. Profit is down there in that left-hand corner, Zuppe knows it, though. Tvik is not going to let him get back through. Prophet knows that he has to circle all the way around and use his last blink to get on the point and try and stall it out. But no, you can see he skirts past. He was a second too late. Yeah, not able to make a fight there. It looked like for a second they thought about it, but I think they were better off, you know, with all six members just fight at this first corner instead, then get Florida to maybe invest the transcendence right here at this corner. Because then you come into the next fight if you're London in that street space, you have both support ults. So you would be in a good spot to win that next fight. So I think right here, you want to see them just dive in deep. You want to get Zupa to use that transcendence. And oh, it would be a fight win. You get awesome guy oh. flying through the sky. You need the the in there. You need that diva following up. And it's possible that he was, and the damage was just too great. Still Florida turned this around though somehow. It's Eversai finding Bidoshin actually with just some Lucio spam to start that off. Ouch! It's so interesting, a team like London who it was so aggressive right at the beginning of Overwatch League, now trying to play like a, like almost like a, kind of diving back onto their own players after the dive from Florida comes on through. Just a much different play style. It didn't really work out for them when right. they tried it a little bit early on. And They're so good on their dive. And li like, awesome guy can be a lightning rod for damage and die, and the Mayhem can still win a fight outright. That's so <laughs> big, man. It's in your filthy bed. Pass and Birdring. Quite often, you're going to see them sitting in that underpass. If you're saying that underpass, by the way, it's incredibly hard to escape self destructs in general. If you're playing ranked or anything like that, send your bombs into this zone. Madison knows better. Listen to Papa Madison. Yeah, that's usually the part of the map where we see teams steamroll on through. But London did have an opportunity to make something out of that, though, with the both support ults. But well played by Florida. Able to keep the payload moving. Bird Ring will switch to McCree here. So it just tells you they want to play more defensive. I, I really liked yeah. when we used to see London play that, like, all-out aggressive play. That's when you it's see Gesture at his best, yeah. you see Prophet at his best as well. Dragon Blade immediately forcing the transcendent, so it's picking up just to back away. Nuss! Goes down, Bidoshin uh, maybe a little bit late on the trans or it just didn't work out regardless. No mercy from Florida and no mercy for the Spitfire for the time being. Prophet sneaking back a little bit. Oh dear, he's low. He's had to get that mini health, which wasn't enough to get him back to full. And he needs to be careful, but right now the teams are sort of jockeying back and forth. That one pick wasn't capitalized on perfectly, but now they're going to come forward with the sound barrier. Prophet wants Zuppe in the back line. I know he's waiting for the Zenyatta. Birdering down, but Zuppe did fall to Prophet. One support left right now for the Mayhem, and the healing is severely cut short. Yeah, you can't leave Zupe in the back there against Profit. Now that is one. classic Florida Mayhem, by the yeah, way. That, that, he often sits back. That, that is a fight that we don't really see Zupe win too often. He does have the effects of Sound Barrier at that point, but I mean, just the Pulse Bomb from Profit comes on in. He's able to just gun him down towards the end. Some changes here that come in for Florida. Saga player will play McCree. See if Tavik plays Genji here. No, he's going to go to Tracer. I didn't, I, All right. We don't really see McCree Genji too often. Maybe we see them pull out a Junkrat as well uh, towards the end of this. I could do that, McCree Junkrat. Yeah. Yeah, and you could you could almost emulate. I don't know how awesome guys sort of feels about playing that Arisa here, but I mean, come on. big horse with minigun. Death comes on four legs, etc. Oh, et et yeah, yeah, whatever. Zebra. Okay. All right. That's, that's a horse with stripes. So we are just going to play the corner here. Keep an eye on that defense matrix uh, meter. So he's used so much of that in a small second, and he has to back up. Still, these micro rockets are great deterrent, and Prophet's in the same spot again. Look at the Zuppe. Great dive coordination. He was there as soon as Jester jumped. And that's just Florida Mayhem getting the floor wiped with him. Yeah, they just haven't been able to keep Zuppe alive. I don't know what they have to change here. 
for Florida, but now I think London is starting to realize if they just keep jumping right on top of them right away with gesture and profit, you're able to get a pick on one I mean, of the supports. Look, Florida are playing on that corner the bird ring standing on. Yeah. And just next to them is where Profit was. That's the second time Profit has come out of that left side entrance just there on the screen. They should know oh. that by now. Or at least, you know, Zuppe should have told them, look, Profit is sitting in here. You can't have a blind spot. And this is where you see, like, the real mind games and the comp switches come through because they know that Zuppe is getting dove on. So now you're trying to answer that with Saya player playing McCree, trying to make a difference here against Profit. If that doesn't work out, do you have to slow the comp down even more? Then you're giving the just positional advantage and you know how the play style is you're giving the advantage there to london yeah. right because then they can be the aggressors where we see them play their best that's a problem now so i play switching to the creek florida probably aren't going to be the instigators of the main divers anymore so london now have that priority pass back to them it seemed to suit florida so much more when they could be the people starting the fights off london, especially when london look extremely uncomfortable when they have to be reactive instead of proactive man yeah and they have to florida has to back out zube gets hit with a self-destruct at the beginning here Bird Ring going to get close to Deadeye, just playing in this position, trying to get some more ult charge. It would be great to have that zoning Deadeye here towards the end of the map. Well, just a few shots go down. Now he'll back on out. All right, Florida has six ultimates to work with here. Six just, ults. Just the two support ultimates online right now for London. This is where you start the fight. This is where you don't get dove on. You don't take a first pick casually to begin the fight. Not like, not like that. Sire player. Not like that at all. He gets resurrected back up close to the mayhem of a chance. They, they have, have to go though. And they have to use Valkyrie. London just backs out here, so you're gonna pretty much just let this Valkyrie burn out while we all can test the payload. Alright, so it's Vic trying to go into the back line. We actually have seen a Valkyrie forced out of Nas at least. Transcendence from Zinianos are both in play, but we all get to see suited here. So there's not gonna be any defense matrix in play. And Sire player takes down Nas. That's because there was no Diva mech there. Great response from Sire player. Pulls the dead eye at just the right time, and he's got three. The McCree now starting to get his farming simulator on. Four for Sire player in this fight. Awesome guy at least gets involved in some of the fighting. And where are the reinforcements gonna come from? For the Spitfire from the backside, but Doshin's barely there. Nas leaps upon it. There's not gonna be any reinforcements. Enforcements and the mayhem get it done. It was a horrible start to the fight, man. They lost Sire player early, but then that man, fourth from the left, goes ham and gets four kills in the final fight. Oh, it's a big rest to bring him back. They don't bring him back. They probably don't win that fight, Mitch. He was absolutely insane. We can take another look at it from Sire player's POV. Do you think if they're able to keep Zupe a little bit, you know, alive a little bit longer in some of these fights, you see this both dead eyes being used there, they're able to catch us out in it. Oh, the three shots. So <laughs> filthy here. Come on, Poseidon player. The Bidoshin gets stuck in such a weird spot. You see him here on the flank? He's actually stuck there for like the remainder of the game. Can't get can't back get to the back payload. Yeah. No, I think, you know, he was part of a, a sort of counter punch or a, a pincer. But then he lost his front line and he sort of had to sit there. And yeah, as that payload rolled home, uh, Bidoshin was still sat in that side room. Not much could be done about that. Florida, I've got to say. Hats off to you. Really good dive so far. I got a little bit concerned when they slowed the pace down and brought the McCree in. Um, you know, they sort of got gummed up a little bit, or at least it seemed that way. They were taking a lot of first picks, but when Sire player gets some space, you can see what he can do with it. They, they've looked really good when they played you know, their just standard dive with your Genji Tracer, Winston Diva. And they've also looked very good playing around those Widowmaker comps. I think that it's the slower, more methodical game. That'll take the more time to develop, yeah, right? Getting on the same page with everybody, more coordination. Plus, yeah. Far more sequential, you know, there's a lot of steps and boxes that need to be checked. So Zube plays Moira here. Obviously more healing. Also, you're able to keep yourself alive a little bit longer, not have to worry as much with the peel. Lucio speed boost as well, just to get them on the point. I uh, think the question is, once they get there, can they push Bird Ring away so he doesn't have these sick and easy shots? Great sidelines to take. Oh, Jason Low, he's down. But Ocean actually was removed from the fight. And you can see the chase is on now into the backside. This is a new look from the Florida Mayhem. I've not seen this kind of killer edge before. But awesome guys going down. Perhaps too much of a good thing isn't a good thing anymore. And Bird Ring is still in position to get shots on the point. Gesture to work the corner. No, they're getting pincered out now, Matt. This could be ugly. Yeah, you needed to keep Awesome Guy out. They do get Bad Ocean yet again, though. So Florida. Still hanging in this, just trying to stay on the payload, but uh, it's going to be Manitou who gets d there. They may not even take point A. They got very close, which 77%. Awesome guy coming back. 
There's time. He can get a touch. There is time. He's only going to be awesome guy in Zebesai right now. The rest of the Mayhem are really staggered out. Oh, hello. Who just dropped onto the point there? It was Sire player. He's returned. The Pulse Bomb, though, is kind of committed to no effect. And Prophet has one here. He'll commit that quite happily to Awesome Guy. He'll fall. Not much he can do about 400 damage straight to the face. And Zuffa has to fade away. He doesn't have that cooldown available, which is when he's going to be the most vulnerable. So expect him to fall. Yes, he always had his coalescence. To pick on the Doomfist takes a huge chunk of damage before he even gets to the point. And it's all much ado about nothing, really, from him there. As uh, he goes for the combo, looks flashy. Doesn't really get too much done. That'll be it. Florida Mayhem. We'll get two ticks, in all fairness, on that first point. It, it was interesting, therefore, towards the end, right? It was like, okay, who's going to get a touch? Because Awesome Guy and Zebo are standing in the street. And they're waiting. And, and London is expecting those players to jump in. But it was actually Saya player who's coming from behind with a Pulse Bomb. And they were trying to, like, set it up where maybe he lands a Pulse Bomb on a Wu Yaw, And then they kind of jump right onto him with Awesome Guy. Just misses that Pulse Bomb. But they definitely weren't prepared for Saya player to come on that flank. Again, Prophet continues to be the leading DPS on the London Spitfire, murdering. Definitely that. turned it around, though. Yeah, absolutely. Bedring's definitely been stepping up. Awesome guys had a little bit more difficulty getting to grips with his targets over the course of this map. But Sire player, I'll be honest, Matt, he's been quiet. There's this Tracer, the McCree. You know that McCree spree that he got? That was like 80% of his kills. So, okay, 60% of his kills for this map came in that moment. He's had two kills outside of that McCree 4K. Two for the whole map. Yeah, I think... I mean, when you, when you look at the numbers and you look at some things that have gone on in the game, I think you really look at, you know, Bidoshin versus Zupe. It, it, you know, Zupe getting dove on by London has forced Florida to change up some of the things that were going well for them to try and protect him a little bit longer. You know, Bidoshin, he's obviously, you know, contributed to a lot of the kills that London has just gotten. Gets him himself. That London has gotten, but he's also, you know, a thousand more hero damage pretty much than Zupe, and then also 4,000 more healing. So you're getting a lot out of Bidoshin. He's also played a little bit more Moira, so that would skew the healing numbers a bit. That's right. And also the eliminations. Getting yes. like a lick on everyone from the Biotic Orb, being shot into an enemy team, obviously, you know, counts for that after a certain threshold. So, the Mayhem here set up with a Genji Tracer defense, or a dive defense, essentially. You can see, yeah, they want to bring the party to the Spitfire. I like this look against London. Take the initiative away from them, but it's kind of backfired, man. They've thrown themselves in. They go for it. It's a gambit. It doesn't pay off. Yeah, I know. Uh, the four players for Florida go to the point, and then they just leave the supports in the back with Bird Ring, and he's able to take out one, get the other low enough to where they can't do anything. London, they'll stand on the point. It'll take in their favor, and they'll take map number two. Great map. Really, really good oh, map, yeah. though, over the course of it. It does come down to that last attack on the point. We've seen two different looks from the Florida Mayhem here. We've, we've seen this aggressive play. We've seen them coming forward. Genji Tracer, great coordination. You know, with Awesome Guy, he's getting in there with Madison. He's being protected. He's being followed up on. And then we're seeing a little bit of a slower place where Sire Player comes in on the McCree. Love to see it. And when it's good to see a team that will push a team like London to respond. Push them to come up with something and a way to break these fights open. It's going to be a good series. It's not done yet. It's 1-0. We'll see you after the halftime break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League. T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League.
Mayhem Sia player is putting on a show, but London has been more than up for the challenge. After winning on Numbani, they find themselves up 1-0 at the half. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. It's Bucket. We got crumbs at the end. Young Bren, the Peaky Blinder in the middle. Bren, uh, a lot of comments about your hair today. All the positive. A lot of comments. Yeah, I don't know, because people aren't going to tell you your haircut's bad, are they? Oh, they will. Like, no, it's everyone I spoke to was like, yeah, it looks really good. Uh, I mean, my barber, to be fair to him, he did a, a bang-up job. I was like, yeah, I'm going to be going to be on the Overwatch League. I was talking to him about esports. He's proper getting into it. But enough about my hair. Can we talk about the game? Please? We can, we can. Let's start with Volskaya, because we asked ourselves, what is Florida going to show us today? With Saya player and as well as awesome guy in the lineup, what is the new look of this team? Well, Volskaya, you saw it. It drew. Both teams played even on this one. They held each other on defense. And so we walk away our first map 0-0. Zero, zero. But what did we see here in the first map from this Florida line? You might be noticing the only highlights we've got here are Sire player, and that's for a very good reason, is the fact that, honestly, the only reason this was a draw was because of this man, right? He clutched multiple times in this game. Uh, again, you remember that overtime push when they were on the brink of losing that point A? Sire player gets three kills. Another point here, he gets a double kill of a pulse bomb. Like, the man you is just clutching all day that. long. Bergering helped him out there a little bit. <laughs> Put it right there roll. on the spur, let him roll in into his Zenyatta. Uh, but Saya player, you saw the Widow, you saw the Tracer. If you had to pick so, one, knowing Nepal Game 3 is coming up next, what do you guys want to see him on? Well, he it was the, to Vic that was playing the Tracer mostly on Volskaya, and what really stood out to me was Prophet did not play man-to-man -man against to Vic's Tracer, and so he just got to go in, into the backline, do whatever he wants, set up Saya player to hit the shots, and that's why you have all your formations that set up everything for the DPS in order to him just has to have a good aim, and that's what happened. And I was very surprised by not trying to keep up with Tivix Tracer, just chilling around. That's what he was doing. <laughs> so he was just hanging out in corners. That's what Prophet was doing. So you think London made a few mistakes with the comps? I wouldn't say mistakes. I, I mean, I think they played well, but London were just, again, they clutched it out multiple times, right? Because there was two moments in that game where London should have won it. But again, Sire player comes in with ridiculous moments that you can't really account for. You can't plan for, you can't really strategize for unless you're purposely trying to shut this player down. He just went off. Like, that's something that you, you just don't really anticipate. That clutch factor, when it comes in, when it kicks in, you know, it takes you by surprise. And there you go, that led to the draw. All right, let's talk about Numbani, though. And I know you have a telestration for us in map number two. What are we about to demonstrate for the audience? Yeah, so it's the uh, insights powered by Intel. It's a uh, point A attack for London, the very first thing we saw coming into Numbani, and it's a very good one at that because London are running a very interesting composition right now. The person I want you to focus on is going to be Bedosin in the back on that Moira and Lucio combo. Now, what they're going for is a death ball composition. They stick as a whole unit. They're going to rush straight onto the point here, take control around this corner, and actually bait Florida around here into trying to poke and prod and dive onto them. And you'll notice as this plays out, I'm going to pause it one more time just before we get to the actual action, but they, they played the point they use the healing orb from Bedosin to keep everyone topped up. Now, Florida are trying to poke, trying to pod, and now they're going to start to try and dive. But as this happens, you'll notice they just counter dive completely into the back lines, and it's such a juicy setup. And it, it just works so, so well. Like, they, again, Florida weren't expecting it at all. They tried to turn it around in the overtime push last time, but this just really does show very nicely why London are this team that you can't really underestimate it in any way because they just pull out these niche strategies. They don't, you know, you have to look hard to see them, but they're just fantastic because it, it requires you to play in a certain different way and it takes teams that can't adapt off guard. It was really smart because it also actually caught Tivik off guard. He was all the yeah. way at the back, so you essentially got no damage done, no kills, and you still get a 5v or 6v5 on your own favor because your tracer is closer. So that was actually really sick play. And we did see Saya player clutching up on that final push from Florida. They get all three points. Now we're in the time bank rounds and we see London cool. walks away with the point. How do they walk away with the win on well, a very close new So bottom? London won in their own push and it was half heartbreaking, half their own doing. And when we got to the third one and Uber was highlighting this and you're going to want to take a look at Jester here because for this entire time London was relatively struggling they're under a minute here, and this should be fine, right? Six man, four, but take a look at that. That, that halt, one halt that right halt there. stops Manatin. That would have been enough because Seba just popped the Valkyrie. You would have likely stalled out 30 seconds. You hit both teams in overtime, and that would have probably been either a draw or even a win for Florida Mayhem. So that halt was so cool. The Arisa right click coming in right? to help you win the game. Pretty big move. So it's surprisingly close. Bren, you thought Florida could steal this match away from London. 
you said he was crazy yes. that this was all London series. We're on match point for London, right? They only need one more game to lock up this series. Florida could steal the series, though, with the win on Nepal in Route 66. Crumbs, what's your realistic expectation now for the second half? How do you see this playing out? I do expect London to come out ahead on this immediate map. However, if Route 66 was earlier, maybe the results would be changing. Because it is one map or one win and a draw, you're in ma match point, and I just don't think that Florida is going to be able to come out ahead when it comes to control. Brent, do you have faith in Florida still? You think they can take uh, a game three? I still have faith in them, honestly. Like, Nepal is a map that... London are historically very, very strong at because they can pull out different <laughs> Right? Things. Okay. But, okay. Give me that faith. We go back to the statistics. But I still believe, again, with these new additions that we've seen, like, you, you can't tell me that they don't have a chance of winning this when you've seen what Sire players pull it off. Oh, no. I mean, you have to be crazy to, to discount them and count Listen. them out at this point. So I'm still going to stick with Florida. I, I still believe that they could do it. It's oh. match point. You have a higher chance. Hey, I'm looking forward to this one because if you look at the numbers when it comes to control, London's worst game mode, just 43% win rate. Florida, a little bit worse at 33%, but we haven't seen them with their current lineup. Game three is coming up after this. Don't go anywhere. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Sour Patch Kids. Sour, sweet, gone. and gentlemen it has been a close game so much so that the first round even came down to a draw but it's the london spitfire who currently hold the 1-0 lead and uh we're gonna see if they're able to keep that up or if the florida mayhem can pull off the upset in the second half and the crowd has certainly been enjoying this match so far today as you can tell and hey if you want to be a part of the crowd, you can do so. You can get tickets on Axis.com. All you have to do, go to the website, search Overwatch, get some tickets, come out here and join us. Be a part of, as I call them, the most attractive crowd in esports. 
I will continue to push that one. Uh, but guys, we got a whole nother half left to go. Can the Florida Mayhem pull this off? Let's find out now and send it back to our casters, Uber and Mr. X. That is the golden question, isn't it, Malik? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to be with you here. Even though we're kind of, you're over there, and we're here. We're in the right crowd are out there. And we're okay, though. in the broom closet. It's okay, though. We have subs coming in from subs. London yep. uh, here on Nepal. The will be uh, Fury, comes back in okay. for Wuyo. And then uh, you're also going to have Hureg, who comes in for Bird Ring. So Wuyo, Wuyo finished uh, Dumbani with 34 eliminations, 12 final blows. So uh, a, a very good amount, about the same as Bird Ring, to put it in perspective there about his performance. So not. You know, we're not seeing Booyah being shunted out because he didn't play well. It definitely, no. this is pre-planned stuff from the Schmidtfire. Yeah, just uh, mixing around a lot of these players, you know, figuring out what the right mix is here in stage number three. Hooray comes in for Bird Ring. I think you probably want a Farah right here if you are the London Spitfire. Yeah, or, I mean, uh, he, al he also does play a, a little bit of Junkrat as well. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can see him on Village. You know, some might say that he's sometimes a safer option than the Farah if you want to really interact with the point properly on Village, that is, not yeah. Shrine, which is where we're going. So we might see that come later on, but it's nice to have Hureg, you know, come in and play these projectile heroes and offer that little bit of extra flexi flexibility when, you know, you want to still keep a Prophet or a Bird Ring in the roster. In this case, Prophet will remain, who's also a great Junkrat player. So options are plenty for Prophet, both these Prophet teams. plays everything at a very good level. Yeah, it does. It uh, does. Kind of the same with Bird Ring. Hureg seems a little bit more specialized in different roles, whatnot. Uh, so we could we could see Hureg play some Tracer, though. He did used to play Tracer. Yes, this is... Uh, we were talking about that today. We were talking about it this morning as we were coming in. Yeah, I haven't the seen GC it, Busan back, all the way back in Apex. Although we just really don't see him play it very much uh, on this roster. No, I mean, with uh, Prophet and Bird Ring, it's kind of difficult to find him Five. some go. Four, playing Tracer, but three, we'll get to see it here. Two, At least that's what it looks one. like. They'll okay. run Round the beginning one. of Nepal for the Mayhem. Zaya player will play McCree. So they're going to run you know, McCree Mercy. Dream Protect Zupain. Play a little bit of a slower, more methodical place. Now. McCree feels good on paper as a response to a Junkrat. He can definitely force Prophet away from more open sightlines. Sort of, again, put Prophet in a position where he has to just sort of hold his breath and hope that he can collect some damage with these grenades. We have seen Zaya player. Definitely is sharp as attack when it comes to the aim part of the game, so there should be no concerns for Florida fans about that. Just the point given up here by London. They're gonna have to work their way over towards it. When they do, awesome guy gets right in gesture's face, forces them to back up yet again. You're playing off that point a little bit. Maybe you get some chip damage with the junk rat going around that center pillar. Not a lot of areas to so, hide. They're able to finish some players off. Didn't exactly work out though. Do you see that from gesture? He panicked. Florida got so much poke damage that Jester had to put his bubble down where he was standing to try and stay yep. alive, and then Florida dived on it. That's when they went for it. They got that first pick off there. And that's off a Sire player, just belting him, by the way. He's got about 1k damage already uh, for a solid 43 45% accuracy. So he was really just chunking away. I used to chunk a lot when I took about damage, but I definitely felt like it in that case. Who raked down to Zupe, no less. Do they dive on this Resurrect? No, or some guy thinks about it, but no. But now you know the Resurrect can't come in in the next fight. You'll have your own Resurrection, right? So kind of, you know, you think about it, puts you almost like a man up, so to speak. It'll be Valkyrie that comes in for Nos. That's when you use your Deadeye. You're going to use your own Valkyrie as well. You see the zoning here. Ooh, Sire player was hoping for the Happy White Skulls. Still didn't get them. Comes in with a flashbang, though. It doesn't really, you know, perturb Jester too much, but he does need to back away because there's no burst healing in a composition that features Mercy in the Zenyatta. And that's a nice way to finish off a Diva Max. Vic now just hosing down Fury to finish him off. And Zupe, okay. Two final blows for him already for three eliminations. Uh, most on the entire Mayhem. And it's huge for Florida that you did see Nuss use his Valkyrie early to resurrect Hurek, and then you got the first pick in the fight. So then you think about it, even if another player drops, you're still going to be at least, what, one player up at that point? So it, it, as good of a fight as it could go there for Florida. Transcendence on both sides, it'll be a rip tire. Rip tire doesn't care about Transcendence. We'll see if it gets anything. So, you know, it's already at half health here. Yeah, Tvik can see it. So he's just radioing that back. The Sire player couldn't see it. One you shot, you one shot there. with the Peacemaker though. Could have kept him alive. I find that interesting. He is brought back to life. But Tvik falls to just the bear trap damage from Prophet. So he must have been very low and he would have been backing away. Sire player caught up, taken down. The mayhem, that Riptire just sort of broke my party. Zupe is having a sick round. His third final blow, way ahead of the rest of his team. His Zenyatta has really started to rip on the Spitfire. Unfortunately, it won't be enough probably to win the fight here for them. They've given up control of the point already. 
He's had killing it. They had to be careful there, though, because if they tried to extend that and kind of hang around a little bit longer, Gesture would have just popped Primal Rage, would have just mashed him to hell in that room. But they'll have Zebo sign with brutal. Valkyrie, Saya player with this Denai. Who regged with the Denai as well? See how these two McCrees play around this. This will probably be the Primal Rage that comes through. Yep. Mind if I drop in? Gesture says he just misses the final shot on Zebosai to finish him off. And with the Valkyrie, Zebosai gets his out of combat regeneration immediately and at all times during that. So that's a good way for Immersion to keep herself up. Sire player? I mean, Bidosa just sends uh, yeah, some orbs in his direction and forces him to recall. He still gets a free reload, I guess, but he doesn't use it. Gesture probably would have had Zebosai when he uses that leap in Primal Rage. It kind of clips that pillar and he's not able to get up as high as he thinks in the oh, sky. Nice. It's a big pick. You may be able to use Transcendence to res this. All right, Nuss. Oh, they're going the back opposite way. way. They're holding it. What's, yeah, Zulbe going down on the point there, but Nuss has been removed now. Bidoshi might be the next target. That was for that half profit. That's a tear. It's a double pulse bomb kill over on the point, and Zebosai and Sire player fell to it. One might say it could have been Zebosai guardian angeling in Sire player's direction, but that's a crucial slip at a very critical moment for the Florida Mayhem. It could have just brought things back. Let's see how this all went down. Profit, pulse bomb. Where does the pulse bomb go? I didn't even see that. <laughs> Just didn't see it. Sorry. <laughs> oh, man. What happened, Matt? You tell me. I didn't see anything. <laughs> Devin so <laughs> quick. Look Just throws it. it to the left. Connects with someone there. Okay. You have a pulse bump for Tabik. Let's see if he can do the same thing. Oh, Jess just caught out. Sire player rolls forward. Gets the flash. He's down to 50 HP. It's being chased down. I know you love when I say H like that. Just, oh no, he's overshot! <laughs> what have you done? He does get knocked away by Awesome Guy, so he gets a little bit of extra distance away from that, so it's not his fault. We'll give him that. But he can't be resurrected back into this fight because he died via environmental means. Vic falls down. That was to the to the resuit animation of Fury there. He died because he got too close to a demon that was resuiting. That's quite funny. So Fury managed to get a free kill in that regard. The Spitfire falling apart in this fight. They got it! They got the round! Get your yellow and red up! These guys are looking good. Now we were out to control. That's a mayhem fans in the front row going hype over there. You have a lot to cheer for today. A lot to cheer for, I think, for the remainder of Overwatch League. It's, it's uh, really awesome to watch a lot of the teams at the bottom just improve over the course of the year, right? There's Shanghai bringing in a lot of new players that are starting to you know, figure it out, I think. Dallas played tremendous yesterday against Seoul Dynasty with OGE in the lineup. Now you see the pickups of Saya play an awesome guy. Paying off here. The additions of these tanks to primarily European teams make such a big difference. Yes. <laughs> well, it's tough to say that about the fuel now, I guess, so that's all about a, a patchwork quilt of awesomeness. Regardless, the Florida Mayhem put themselves a nose out in the lead here on Control. We're going to Sanctum. And you're going to have Hureg play Widowmaker here. Uh, obviously, we've seen it in the past, but. The Saya player versus Burbering when the favorite of Saya player, you, you would think going up against Hureg, who's coming in pretty cold, right? Just playing in the back. Uh, just forget everything I just told you. <laughs> I mean, I do that naturally, Matt, but it's nice at least to have the invitation to do so. Awesome guy down to Fury. Saya player was brought back. So now, you know, he'd be respecting. He'd be respecting that Hureg widow maker. We'll see what he can do. For now, it's all about Zulfe, though. We had an incredible round, by the way. Three final blows in the previous round. The only player on his team who had more in that round was to pick, so I'm impressed. Oh, okay, side now, play is now, back. here we go. Yeah, yeah, okay. Finds himself two. Well, the issue, you can't press the point here because you did lose Awesome Guy. You need your Orisa to do this. Yeah, that, uh, Awesome Guy wasn't getting any healings because Zebo Sai was resing Saya player, and Zubay doesn't want to pop out his Zen and just get his face blown off, so. Oh, oh peekaboo. So the Nuss there. Being very diligent, not letting any of his hitbox protrude from behind the masonry. Fire player goes for a swing outward. Oh, Jess is in deep trouble here. There was that brief window where his shield cooldown wasn't up. He takes a big hit, but it's not capitalized on. Oh, Sire player, as he looks away, who springs forward from hiding. Gets a big hit on it. Madison's decent. The fight's still pretty good for London, though. I mean, it's just gone on for so long here. They're able to just have Jester stand on the point, just keep him behind this barrier. Florida, they'll use their Valkyrie. They have to be careful. They're probably getting close to a rip tire. Could end all of this. Okay, we have infrasight for both teams. That's where things get pretty interesting, especially because Prophet and Tavik are playing quite close. Sort of, you, know, you can see Prophet sees Tavik, so they're very near to each other. So Bidosin and Zinyatis do very well with infrasight for ease and pick off these kills, and Prophet knew exactly where to send the rip tire. It seems that Florida may have a very good with the dive compositions, but their Orisa, their slow roll set up with the Junkrat doesn't look quite as polished. They stood on the point there with London for a solid 30% of the time. Goes from about 30% when I when I glaze up at the clock all the way up to 60% there. So okay. 
Are they not pressuring this Orisa shield and gesture enough in general? Uh, I, I mean, they were trying to, right? I mean, Saya players trying to look for picks. You have to pick coming from the opposite side. It's just it's the healing from both place. sides. Yeah, it's just like a war of attrition. You're not really doing much. It'll be a rip tire that comes in for Tavik. It'll be a supercharger that takes the brunt yeah. of that damage. Now you get gesture. Now you can start to push forward. But here's a transcendence that'll allow the res to come through from Nuss. Yeah, Nuss gets it. There was no crowd control abilities available. Awesome that could have used the whole, I think it was on cooldown while that was happening. Awesome guys to back away, put the shield right in the corner. You know he's playing a little bit more defensively now on Madison Discord. And Tvik found Fidosa now for his turn to the fight. But look who's coming around the backside. It's a Junkrat, Sire player, and Zooming and knocked up. And what is down? It's so filthy. Drop against himself too. The mad scientist that he is. And now awesome guy is going to be surrounded. Unfortunately, the shield is only unidirectional. And he can get behind it. The classic Junkrat flank gets him every time, Matt. Every time! You could see it from the, the POV, like Saya player just go <laughs> flying up into the sky as he gets a, a Junkrat mine in his back, and then as soon as he goes up in the sky, he gets another one thrown at him. So we'll see what London decides to do. This is where you thought they would have brought in Hurag to play some Ah, uh, that's what Right up to the main Saya player. So, I, I think it's safe to say, Matt, that there's work to be done for Florida on building out their Orisa setups. Uh, honestly, like, you could, there are only a couple of maps where you really need to call upon that one. Uh, obviously, Junkertown, uh, Sanctum. Well, I think it's just a, a little bit of those slower comps, because when you're playing an aggressive dive, you know, the tank's calling out the dive, everybody's going with him. Yeah. There's not as much more individual decision-making had to have been made in there than, like, playing a little bit of a slower, more static composition. So the cheeky beaky, far up from Hurik and Fick. Fick getting a lot of poke damage down here. You can see the gesture is a little bit low on health, and that was mostly because there's far rockets connecting. So the Spitfire opt to sort of take point first and sit up on this this far side, which will make them more vulnerable to to uh, sort of splash damage. Hurik fell there to Madison. I'm not really sure if he just fell off the edge there. We switched away from the last moment. He still looked like he had a bit of help. Either way, the one player down for the time being, and he won't be resurrected, so it could have been environmental. Doesn't really matter, though, because Bedosin's there again. Deals an awesome guy. There's three players clumped up for the mayhem. They're all get, they're getting the heck out of dodge, man. They're done. Yeah, and it, it's a tough one for Florida, because when you get that pick on the far, that's exactly what you're looking for at the beginning. But they go in all the way towards that left, the right-hand side of the point from where they're attacking from, and they're not able to finish off any of the players for London. They keep them all alive as they try to push on through. Funny story, Hurek has one final post. Just one. It's all been about profit so far, with oh, 11 been of his own. Hurek got one Widow pick in that last map, and then nothing else for the entire It was that opening one on the player, yeah. that's it. And then it didn't matter, because from that point, the Mayhem couldn't set up properly, didn't have the backup they needed for Awesome Guy. I mean, that's another story. We'll get back to that one another time, because right now, the Mayhem, again, starting not so well, they got the first pick in this map. And well, yes. well, well, you look at Hurek, right? I mean, he's only sitting at 19% you know, of team damage. One final blow, like you said, six and six right now. I, and you're like, oh man, well, how is Florida you know, not taking this? You know, hero damage for the London Spitfire. You have Prophet leading the way. You have Bedotion, number two. 23% yeah. of overall team of damage on the Zen. Here's the transcendence. The Mayhem need to do something with this. They need to find picks or get aggressive or gain positioning as a response to having a healing ultimate. Where you got Prophet? Oh, okay, zoop him. Yep, fair enough. One clip there, just a bit of a slap. Sire player's forced to recall, and now he can't go nearly as deep. Pulse Bob! Might find the double. In fact, not even really the D suit at the time. It's gets interrupted rather rudely while he tries to go for that barrage. He was brought back to life just to go back to spawn. It's frustrating, but that's what it's like playing against a team like the Spitfire. Prophet, eh? Do this guy. Zebo and Zupe going to have nightmares about Prophet. Yes. I mean, he has just been all over them today. Just every time they try and push on through, you know, Zupe on the Z. Just if he's like a split second behind the rest of their team, he's just getting blown up by Prophet. Doesn't even stand a chance. Oh, there can be a no. bomb on an awesome guy. They won't have the main tank here towards the end. Fury could see that coming a mile off. He knew Zebesai was trying to approach the point, but he's avoided most of the micro rocket damage by keeping Fury at arm's length on the Lucio. However, now Bad Ocean's here. It's going to be the Transcendence healing provided, and Hurek's more than happy now to play around the point, or at least close to Bad Ocean. This is so much healing, it can't be damaged through it. 99 to 0 here. The Florida Mayhem started off well, but this is looking pretty average for them, if I'm honest with you. And this will be the series now. If they lose this one, the London Spearfire will take it. They give themselves two map wins, and with the first map being a draw, there is no way 
for the Florida may have to win this. No, but it has been a very close series. Uh, so if you are Florida and this is the first time you're playing with Awesome Guy, right, in an official Overwatch League match, you have to like what you see. You're taking a very good team, you know, your number two team right now. There's Paul, somebody connects on the Saya player there, just uh, come right back in. Sebo didn't Evo. even run into him by accident. He was just stuck up in the corner there. We have one more match to be played, and we want to see a little bit more from this new look Florida Mayhem roster. Will it be more Arisa Junkrat Cops? Will it be more Widow player from Saya player? That's what we're looking forward to. Stick around. We'll see you in just a second. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Intel, the official computer processor of the Overwatch League. And by T-Mobile, America's best unlimited network. Absolutely insane there, Tobik just dancing around on the payload. In week three of stage two, Florida was looking to hold Dallas on Watchpoint Gibraltar to extend the match to a tiebreaker map, but it seemed like a foregone conclusion that the fuel would take the final point. Looks like the Dallas fuel should be able to push the payload the distance. In overtime, the rest of the mayhem were coming back from spawn, so Tvik had to somehow stay on the payload by himself. Tvik still alive here, bitch. The mayhem's tracer eliminated Rascal, ducked out of the way of Mickey's self-destruct, took out the fuel's mercy, and stayed alive just long enough for his teammates to rejoin the fight. Now the rest of the Florida Mayhem are coming in, they might be able to turn this around, unbelievable! Florida held the point, took the map, and then beat the fuel and the tiebreaker for the match win. They've done it! The Florida Mayhem is the second win of the season! That right there was the turning point where Tavik and the Florida Mayhem turned a sour moment into something sweet. Presented by Sour Patch Kids Candy.
What a series that was. Quite the yeah, throwback awesome. there to stage yeah. The Fuel versus the Mayhem. Speaking of the latter as well, we've definitely been taking a very close look at the Florida Mayhem. We've had them under the microscope, Matt, especially a couple of their individual players between them and the Spitfire. Yeah, the one graphic I saw come up during the commercial break was the Zupe versus Bidoshin one. It's something we talked a lot about there on Nepal, but if we can take a look at the numbers, I mean, they were just crazy for Bidoshin just look you know the, obviously no more damage done no, over 2,000 more damage done look at the healing numbers also providing like 3,000 more healing for the final glows the eliminations you know, less deaths say so it's just all around a tremendous game from Bidoshi one thing we don't have is what I'd be really interested in is time spent alive because obviously yeah. this is a Zenyatta like a lot of your healing you know let's assume that healing your orb is always on someone and healing someone at all times which is not always the case of course but at this level we can maybe assume in a simplified manner it could just be time alive that makes that difference. But when you're getting more healing, and the thing is, right, when you're charging up orbs all the time, you can't switch your Discord orb over while you're charging yeah. a right click. You need to let that go or use a melee attack to cancel the animation, then reapply a Discord or harmony orb. So normally, higher damage Zenyatta's are getting less healing because they're not actually able to move that orb around as economically to heal their teammates. So this is why it's so important, perhaps, that we're seeing Bidoshin is, is winning in both of those categories. And of yeah. course, as you saw, Bird Ring is back. Yeah, Bird Ring comes back in here. Probably gonna play Widowmaker. Uh, but it's just an overall large contribution to the team coming in from Bedosian. I mean, he figured he finishes Nepal. Uh, I know number two in uh, team damage contributions, right? 21% of overall team damage, only behind Prophet, who's at 27%. Right. Uh, to kind of give context to that, you know, the next highest person comes through with 17% uh, of team damage. That was uh, Fury. Yeah, that would be Fury at 6,500. Playing so, Diva. Unnerved Diva. Diva. So it's a it's a pretty big game there from Bedosian to give Nepal a match that looked like it was going to be 50-50 for a while. You know, Florida was playing them very tough. Just kind of puts London over the top. Which is why I'm so excited for this match, Matt. This is where Sire Player really started to show off on his debut. The Widowmaker really started to make some heads roll. Oh, we can see a bit of Sombra on this map perhaps as well, but Bird Ring v Sire Player. The Redux, we're back. And Florida are going to be starting on defense here. I'm excited to see this. This is going to be a good Widowmaker battle, like you mentioned. Sire Player, it's, uh, it's been the hero. I think we have all can say we've been the most impressed with him yes. thus far. I think a lot of players also speak very highly of, of, of spoke very highly of Sire Player on that. So we kind of had a prelude to his ability on that hero. Now you see London very strong on this map, in escort maps in particular. I wonder what they'll decide to run on offense. They could run just a dive. You'd have Bird Ring play Widowmaker. Uh, don't know if you'll see double hit scan. That would be quite interesting. Unless you would think there's a Sombra coming through, then you would maybe play the McCree. Five, Mac McCree four, Widow we haven't seen three, yet. It's like no, a it's combo. super, super Five. uncommon actually. I mean, let's unpack it. It looks like that's actually going to be what we see here. So not a lot of mobility, zero dive to speak of. It looks like London would rather keep Florida at arm's length as much as possible. But Tavik kind of has to walk into a, a Trace of the McCree matchup, which isn't always great, right? No. Not ideal. Three is very slow hero. They're not going to even be running a main tank with this. They're going to be running Roadhog Diva. So they, they, they must be expecting a Sombra. They think a Sombra. Normally yeah. when we do see the Roadhog Diva with the double flex tank, uh, that and, kind of indicates that. And I think Jester's just kind of sitting here around the corner, maybe firing some shots. He's going to try and grab one, but I think you're always, like, they're just waiting patiently because they think that Sombra's going to come around on that flank through now. the tunnel. 15 now seconds in, they can tap and see what the enemy team comp is. They can't see the team composition prior to that, and obviously Sombra's hard to spot. It may not matter, though. As you can see, these picks have been pretty good. Zuppa's down. Bidosa was traded out. I mean, we're seeing a lot of kills while, while, while Birdery's just trying to set up. That's how the game goes sometimes. Fury's been getting involved, so both these two teams have come clashing heads here, and it's been pretty good. Fury gets himself a three-piece with some healing, and there doesn't seem to be any hero swaps for the Spitfire, so they're going to be happy with the setup for now. Oh, they're going to keep on rolling with this. They should be able to take point A. Maybe we see a contest come through for Florida, but I wonder what Florida decides to do if they stick with this comp or they decide to change. It's a uh, it's going to be a hard one for Tavik to play into, right? Because you have the flashbang from McCree, and then you're also worried about Gesture with the Roadhog Getting hook. hooked, or just being spotted by Bird Ring. If you have the Infrasight, you can I kind mean, of see where a trace is going to come. Just think about it. I mean, uh, Bird Ring from the distance, Prophet close range and distance, Gesture close range, and Bidotion, right? With the Discord Orb could really yeah. give you a lot of trouble. So it's very hard to play Tracer into this comp. It doesn't help that Sire Player got dunked pretty early in that fight. Not having that Widowmaker means that Bird Ring has literally no threats because Trace is not great at accessing high ground. She's got to get the long way around to him and he jumps on, you know, any 
Jack closes in a vertical sense. Tracer can't really go all the way in deep against Roadhog and McCree, right? Especially when they're being pocketed by a Mercy. It's very difficult. Easy to pass through the eye of a needle, mate. Get there. So Jess is being pressured a little bit on the payload now. Vic drops in. Pulse Bomb delivered. Uh, again, Jester taking a bunch of damage, but it's really just him. He's soaking it up. He's doing his job, to be honest with you, as uh, this Roadhog tank. Tavik managed to finally access Birdring, who was actually playing uh, right around the back up on that high ground. So Tavik has gone a long way around, as we kind of expected. And Madison, Discord all means there's no way he's surviving now. But again, he can set up the self destruct, force people out of the building. Sci-Fi needs to be careful. Jess is looking for that hook, and he's got him on cooldown right about now. Doesn't quite predict it, though. Yeah, they weren't even really worried about Tavik, though, coming on the flank after he takes out Birdring. Nobody even turns to go deal with him. He actually thinks that players are going to come back for the payload. But London decides to just keep pushing on forward, and Tavik's never able to get another pickoff after that. You have a dead eye here from Profit. Could potentially zone some players off, pick some players off here in the open. Just through another hook failing to connect, so now he's just going to take a bit of a step back and wait for the rest of his team. Oh. Birdring found Sire player there. He had the infra sight. So Prophet now sort of knows where the tracer is. He can keep an eye on Tvik's position. Yeah, and Zemo's I basically wastes Valkyrie there, right? Because as soon as Valkyrie comes through, you just back on out of your London. So you don't, yeah, you don't really get the benefits of that healing. It's one of the oh. downsides of using it to engage. Six bit coming, screaming past him. Just a bit of health. That's the thing. If your opponent is low on HP and they're still hard to hit, hit Dead Eye for one second, then use it straight away. It, you know, the time it takes for that to channel is based on the amount of a remaining health your target has, and it's proportional. It's been a really interesting composition from London. I wonder if they would have gotten stopped at the beginning, they would have switched off of this right away. But it seems to just be kind of working, so you, you, may, you may as well roll with it. And uh, Profit, the big reason why it's working here, Mitch, shooting 60% with McCree, this guy is, uh, he, he's so sick. He and Bidosin are uh, carrying the Spitfire pretty hard, I'd say, of these last couple of maps, at least. <laughs> Birdring finds Sire player, <laughs> though, so... Birdring has something to say about that. Well, that's that. his second kill yeah. of the round, so he's killed Sire player twice. That's Birdring's contribution thus far. The rest of his team have been doing it for him. He just hasn't needed to do too much. This has not been good from the Florida Mayhem map. This has been sloppy defense and being shoved away. This is where they can turn it around. And that Pulse Bomb on Nuss is how they open up the fight. I mean, this could also be the salty Spitfire run back after getting, uh, obviously after losing to the Philadelphia Fusion on this map. This was kind of what undid them in that semi-final playoff match. Well, the cop that uh, London was running was also very hard to dive. You never want to send your Winston straight into a, a Roadhog and then potentially McCree back there. Zenyatta has all such damage dealer. Changes do come through though for London. Gesture will go back to Winston. Much more standard now, yeah. isn't it? Profit will play Tracers. Get Hero. those two heroes in the game. Mirror compositions. Sometimes we see Genji on the attacking side to try and break this with things like Dragon Blade. A lot of flanking roots available. Birdering. Sire player just picking cherries there. His head was about the size of one from that distance. But Birdering's brought back because Florida are giving so much space to the Spitfire. You can get it and get those cheeky reses. And now it's mixed out. So the men advantage actually rests with the Spitfire despite them losing the first player in this fight. They're going to use Transcendence as well. They're going to get aggressive now. On to Florida. the awesome guy just trying to back on out. Profit trying to find an angle to work with here. Awesome guy keeping the payload just in stasis there. The self strike gets thrown in, but everyone from the Spitfire drops into the lower levels. There's no one on the mayhem to really capitalize on that, except apparently for Sire Player, who's now working up. He's been beating Birdring in the last two head to heads, but Birdring keeps getting rest, and Profit is just wrecking people. And now Sire Player's getting oh. a pulse bomb as well. You better believe you'll probably just go and kill Zupan. Gets the recall, the rest of his team was there to help him. This is a one-man wrecking ball. I've never seen such a dangerous player <laughs> in such a non-threatening package oh. in the real world. This is unbelievable. Prophet's just <laughs> cackling to himself. The smiling Dude, assassin, he, he the is, silent killer. He's doing whatever he wants out there today. Yep. It does not matter. He's oh, yeah. having himself an insane day of play here against Florida. Florida getting dragged out of Route 66 by their beards. And if you look at Vix, that's hard to do. But trust me, he's doing it. Manaton's gonna get desuited here. The rest of the Florida may have to back away and try and go one by one. Manaton faces the front of five players. Damage, I hear an infrasight. That was coming from Bird Ring, so it's gonna be very easy for him to see where the rest of the Florida Mayhem are coming from now. It's gonna be trickier for the boys in red and yellow to stall out this one properly. Yeah, Bird Ring picks him off. That's it. I mean, honestly, guys, I like yelling as much as the next person, but that was a systematic deconstruction of yep. the Florida Mayhem. London looked about 10 times better on that map. Yeah, London putting on a clinic there on their offensive side on Route 66. And now look, you still have to remember this is a uh, new look Florida Mayhem lineup. They're still working awesome guy in. 
it's something that's going to take time, especially going up against such a sick team like the London Spitfire. Then you have to like what you see here. At the beginning, we got some Birdring highlights here. A sick double kill. Widowmaker just trying to shoot through the crack here. With Infrasight there. I mean, that's oh. such a, it's such a power play moment when the enemy team is forced into stall and you have Infrasight. So a bit of a smile back on the young Joker's face now, but Matt, give me a rundown of profit by the numbers in that round, because from, from what I could see, the eye test, he was just all over it. Oh, I mean, I uh, you know overall at the top in terms of team damage, uh, top in a limb, uh, second in a limb, so Fury. Sorry, I uh, you know eight final blows. Just it's building up a pulse bomb. Uh, yeah, get get this. So T Tavik played Tracer, what, pretty much the, the whole game, right? Didn't Maybe he didn't have an opportunity to use the pulse bomb, maybe held on no, for he a little did. bit longer. He, did. he uh, just didn't quite get the kill when he used well, it. Well, so you look at ult charge time. Obviously, Tavik dies five more times than Prophet. Have to take that into account. Prophet only <laughs> dies once. But Prophet is getting a pulse bomb every 45 seconds. Tavik, a 45. minute 44. A minute 44. So yeah. it's a whole minute difference between those two charging it, which, all, which says a lot about their rate of damage done. Yeah, it's... Uh, uh, I mean... Okay, so Prophet has eight final blows. The entirety of the Florida Mayhem have ten across all of their players. I mean, Bidocean's having another good round, you know. Zupi, unfortunately, has not been able to create these opportunities to get frags. It's tough for Zinyata to play up against the Widowmaker. That's why you see Zupi have much more of an impact on that control map, especially yeah. on Shrine, because he's not playing to a Widow. Five, Big old four, massive hitbox he's got. Three, so, the Florida Mayhem now to try and bring things back, and this would be a great way to get in someone's head, literally and figuratively there care of a large caliber bullet and awesome guy just has to shrug that damage off and join the rest of his team he was hoping for sire player was murdering didn't quite get him just a little bit of a shot there right to his head gives him a decent amount of ult charge though right look at this murdering already at 51 percent in terms of the infrasight make it very difficult for to get anything going on the flank it, it, it's, it's hard already right because he's just dueling profit and he's one-on-ones yeah. Okay, but Ocean down. Nice work by Sire player. Goes for the low ground angle, but again, because the Florida Mayhem aren't playing a full dive comp, but they're not. Oh, they're not really going in deep on that stuff. Nas is able to get a res on Bidoshin, and maybe the Florida Mayhem were a little bit slow on the uptake. Super, first final blow of the game. He found profit here. Now the Mayhem are sort of sticking together for the most part. Yes, they got a couple of kills, but not enough to make them feel like they can go tumbling over. But now it might be the time. With Jester down, Bird Ring missing. It has to be go time to turn it up, get aggressive, take it up to 11. Yeah, they, they definitely can start moving the payload, getting very close to point A. You do have Fury here still alive, though, for London, so you can send this Steve out. Go try and contest. You use the Infrasight here for London, so you, you gain a little bit of insight of where they're playing as you come out. It'll be Valkyrie used here by Zebo. It's also going to be Infrasight used. Oh, nice stick. Sire player. Nice stick there from Tavik. That probably seals away point A. Now, Jester had only about 20 HP left, but that was a clean kill on Nas, who was going to be able to keep him alive. Nice patience from Tavik. You can see him. He sees three players clustered together. He's thinking, I'd love to pulse bomb them, but he holds on to it. Good work by the Mayhem, showing that they've still got what it takes when it comes to being that attacking team, and now they're trying to follow it up. They trade out Tavik for Birdring. Awesome guy doesn't seem to be done there, though, and Prophet has to turn and back away. They'll get a res though. Sire player takes out Bidoshin as well. So. He's suffering the same way Zupir did last oh, round. Oh yeah. Bird ring. So I said, got a pretty nice target for these Widowmakers. It'll be Valkyrie used by London. That'll force Transcendence out. This will also give London the edge in terms of support ults in this next fight, because you'll have Transcendence available. Oh he's, yeah, he's super dead. Oh, oh nice no. grab for the way! Oh. Can he find Bird ring here? One more flick. That will be uh, the juice, so to speak. He didn't quite fight it, and now it's going to be Bidoshin sending some orbs and Jester flying through. Frustrated that his quarry had managed to evade him for so long. He was Surprised he lived that long. Yeah, me too. It was a little, nice bit of flair there. I could use the grunt. Come on! What have you learned, Vic? You run straight at Bidoshin, bro? For real? Nicely done. But right click from Bidoshin to clean that kill up. But that's the type of kills that Zenyatta's in the Overwatch League need to come through with. All right, so once you see Jehan come through with Bidoshin. <laughs> Uh, Jonak as well. No, the I Tracer one on one. It's, it's so massive. It just gives your team such a huge advantage when you have a Zen back there who's able to win those engagements. Which is why truly good Tracers, um, you know, uh, you know, when people say that, they're often forgetting about the backup and the, the, the extra players that are jumping in on that dive, like your Winstons and your Divas and such. Again, because it's very hard to do it on your own against a Zenyatta player, especially yep. one like that. Sire player gets a pick, he gets a second. 
but there's no one else there from the mayhem to really help advance this further. Three kills is nice, but guess who's coming up behind him? Yeah, it's Big Boy Gesture, who does take a headshot. Yeah, but he for player. forces him out into the open, though. Fury is going to come from behind finish. It's now, yeah, it sucks because the Florida Mayhem can capitalize on this, but have to go now. We'll see if that. No, you see Zeversai? He was getting the resurrect, but he got booped away. Nice Being play. displaced will cancel that channel of the resurrect. So, Sire player, I love to see kills like that, but the rest of his team weren't there. They'd already kind of died, so it didn't really do much for them at all, except give him some old percent. Yeah, and there's a heads up play by Gesture to just put himself in that doorway facing that angle, because it forces Sire player Sandwich. back towards Prophet and Fury, and they're able to finish that kill off. And then Fury, a nice play as well, going in to, you know, break up that res, like you were mentioned. Murdering down, Sire player found him, though. That's the turnaround. Prophet went in for a pulse bomb and didn't get one on the backside. And now on the front side, this is Bidotion getting mashed to big. He'd love to deal a pulse bomb, pulse bomb to Nuff, but he's already flown away and there's no point wasting on Fury. Good fight for Florida Mayhem right now. They open it up with a good pick to start things off. Murdering and Bidotion are still returning to the fray and the rest of the Spitfire are being cut down to size. Yeah, that's a parting gift from your boy Vic. Not quite a kebab, but it'll do. This can get rezzed up though. No Nuss coming off spawn. I think it was a good fight for Florida. You ended up having to burn both support also to get the payload going again. So Nuss will use that res on a gesture. You do have Valkyrie here available. Now that the Infrasite's worn off for Florida, it's going to be Birdring that uses his. Valkyrie used by Nuss to come forward. Sire Player was jumped on immediately there. Infrasite was available for the Spitfire, so they could tell that Sire Player was slightly out of position, or at least playing peripherally from the rest of the mayhem. And look at this, they transition into a kill on Zupair. The dive, very well orchestrated. And the mayhem turned to dust. So, so this is where you really punish Florida for using both of those support alts to get the payload moving. You come out, you use your Valkyrie, you win that next fight. Now, Florida, you're going to have to, what? It's going to be another fight pretty much until Zeppo or Zupi is close to either of their support alts. You only have a minute on the clock. So yep. you're really looking at both of these support alts coming online with, what? You know, 30 seconds, 25 seconds left. At that point, you know, Bidotion still has this transcendence. So you can just use that transcendence. You probably are going to get close to another Valkyrie as well. So London playing the ultimate game very well. Payload, there's a back cap on the way right now. It's big and awesome guy sitting on the payload. This Spitfire right even there. They're still moving it. They're, they're they're back. Might, yeah, they're getting very, very close. Not quite towards the end. You can see they're in a little pit. Very, very cheeky. And because, of course, you know, the Tracer and the Winston were missing, the Mayhem were always going to get crushed in that fight. They were playing 4v5. Birdring obviously was watching the payload move. And they didn't quite get the cap. Very cheeky. And London did use their transcendence. So now that support ultimates off the table. Zebo, Sai, and Zupe built up a decent amount of ult charge during the next fight. You can build up some ult charge here by having Awesome Guy use the Primal Rage, take a bunk to damage, and just charge up maybe that Valkyrie. See Prophet just looking there in that corner, using the emotes, just to position that camera. Yeah, great, oh. great camera angle there. Prophet found Zupe, this is over! He was in such a good position, both supports for the Florida Mayhem are missing. Time. Can they squeeze us across the line? Pedotion! has been taken down, so at least the Zenyatta count is zero for both teams for the time being. Prophet finds his third for the fight, though Manhattan tries to jump in as a self-destruct on the point. Awesome guy, can't do much but try his interpretation of like a half dab at more throwing his hands around. Surprised he's not breaking plates, it's kind of what it looks like. He drops in, Zebesai, there'll be no resurrect for him, there's just no way to get that done. Zupe jumps in, knocked away, unbelievable, they're gonna get this done! Sire player and Zupe combine! Zupe gets two, a helix rocket kill, but he's cut down by Bidotion. Now Fury knocks Sire player off the payload, Fix Pulse Bomb doesn't fight Bidotion, and it's a quick little bit of extra healing coming from Nuss. That should be Struggle Town here now for the Mayhem. The rest of them are trying to get there. Doomfist, Manhattan drops in, the People's Elbow comes down, he doesn't find a kill, and no! It won't be enough, and you can see the relief from the London Spitfire. Is that got a little bit too close for comfort at the end, Matt? Florida is almost able to push it, but in that final fight, it's kind of the, the summary of the entire game for the Mayhem. Both supports dying right at the beginning of that fight. You didn't get a chance to use the Valkyrie in a meaningful way. You know, they use it towards the end just to have Zebosai try and get back to the card. He's not able to. And Zupe is about 70% on his way to Transcendence. You never get a crack at that either. There's no way you can't give Prophet Man of the Match in this oh, one. Oh, yeah. Perhaps Bidotion, an honorable mention at second. No, but it's got to be Prophet. Prophet is just absolutely unchained. Nothing that the combined forces of Tvik and Sire player could really do about him. Good looks from the Florida Mayhem though, Matt. We're happy. My report card gives him a, a B plus for the time being, especially compared to the past. Let's go to the desk though and get the real analyst's take on this match. I like the B plus call. I like that a lot. Welcome back, everybody. It's Puckett here at the analyst desk. I've got the boys with me again. It's the breadcrumbs. 
Game three was coming up. Bren, you had faith in your Florida Mayhem, and early on, things were looking pretty good for this squad as we take a look. Well, Prophet's tire How's wasn't that? really fun. How's His that? tracer wasn't really fun, but Florida was looking pretty strong to start this control. How's that faith working out? Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, it comes and goes, but you, you got to have faith in these guys, you know, because uh, one day they are going to win and people will think that I'm intelligent. Today was Kudos to day. your patience. <laughs> Today was not that day, apparently. They did end up taking the initial point on map three, though, which was interesting to note. However, they kind of dropped the ball a little bit coming into the later rounds of Nepal. And I mean, it, I think it comes down to the fact that maybe they weren't as prepared to play against the style that London were, were throwing at them, which was essentially, I mean, when it was on the sanctuary, section in the yeah they oh, were just okay. sort of just staring at each other across the point it was very odd to watch it was a very bizarre game all around right. like it's this th this in particular <laughs> it's so it strange 60 points of cap for london before Ooh. florida started moving around but it looked super weird it was i think that's just a testament to florida being a new team especially with the shot yeah. calling right because it was such a strange situation with both teams almost identically mirrored where the Widowmakers had full line inside of everybody. No one can come out. And so they just didn't know what to do in that moment. And I was talking with Monty downstairs. He said Gesture honestly won that game for the Spitfire. His play on the Orissa and actually his shield plays right, was the difference maker. So if you guys are playing Orissa, go back, watch Gesture on how to use her properly. Absolutely. I, I agree with that 100%. That, that was the one thing we picked up on was the fact that it seems like Awesome Guy is a little bit uncertain when he plays the Orissa compared to the Winston or maybe other tank roles. So you can definitely see a little bit of uh, uncertainty in his play. I think that definitely affected it. Now, it felt like Florida kind of deflated after that loss in game three they knew the match officially was over but the map count still matters right well Florida was able to pick up at least the first few points here in route 66 bird ring though back in the mix who on the bench as the widow comes out from bird ring and guys we talked about it last week where is he in the running right now best widows on the planet with bird ring you want to you yeah. want to make that claim pucky you want to go there my yeah man? I want to go there whole ridiculous amount of Widowmakers in the Overwatch League. It's so hard to really pinpoint him into one particular location. It, almost impossible, I'd say. But the one thing I want to talk about is actually a, a composition that London were running with the Bird Ring. In fact, Sideshow tweeted about it, and that's what really brought my the attention. The Prickly to Pear? The Prickly Pear strategy, as he calls it. Yeah, it's the, the gesture on the, on the Roadhog. You have the McCree and a Widowmaker as well. So you can't dive them because then you're going to get flashbanged and hooked and, and killed. But you can't poke them either because then you're just going to get sniped and hooked. So I, I like the Josh's take on it, the prickly pear strategy. I, I think I've totally got that wrong because that's a, a beverage that I've ordered at a bar before. But Bren, let's, let's, talk, let's talk a little bit about that composition real quick. What are you talking about for me if I'm a new fan? You said, I can't play close up and I also can't play far. How do you counter what London's running? I, it's, it's very difficult. I feel like... I think more precise dive is probably the answer to it because at the end of the day, dive composition, when you're playing the- I got Genji, the answer the for Tracer, you. got the answer for I me get, already? Yeah. I mean, in my opinion, I think you have to play a stronger sort of dive. You have to be really solid in terms of your target coordination. If you pick somebody off, burst them down before they even have a time to react. But it's that's the, the cooldowns that you have to bait out with the dive. So ah, you got the right. Winston Tracer and the Diva. So the McCree flashbang and the hook from the Roadhog are very important abilities here. If you can get those out, either eat them or simply dodge them with Tracer or even the Winston bubble, and you're solid. If you're a London fan, you have to be impressed with the win today. You get three maps out of the four, and you also showed basically everything in your arsenal. But our player <laughs> of the match, sponsored by Omen by HP, it's got to be Profit. When I saw this man on Village Game 3, he was not missing a shot. His tracer so on point. The pulse bombs constantly taking out the supports and just dismantling the support of Mayhem. It was a close one between him and Jester, especially since he had that halt hook combo. But him right here in this last map was so crucial in Numbani, being able to spawn camp and kind of look for these strange angles. He had a really good game that I think it, it was, London yeah. needed. This. It was def they definitely needed it. I think Profit needs an award just because of how consistent he was across the entire series. Look at that, 14 deaths to his name with 92 eliminations. 55% of the bomb attached. Attached, that's a very high number. Usually the average lays around 40 or lower. So it's it's quite an impressive statistic. Profit, one of the new young lads that you really need to keep a, an eye on. I definitely guess. one of the best DPS in the league today. He is your player of the match, sponsored by Omen by HP. That's gonna do it for our first two matches of the day, but still to come, we have an amazing matchup between the Philadelphia Fusion and the Houston Outlaws, but more importantly, <laughs> our good buddy Sideshow is coming back to the venue today. He gets his cast off next week, <laughs> and for the final six days, everybody that is in the room today gets a chance to come down and draw or put your name on that thing on his arm. What a specimen. What I'm doing has 
It blurs the line between drawing and writing. We won't go there. We <laughs> won't go there. We won't. We're artists here on the desk. Make sure you guys join us. That's coming up at the end of the show. On the other side of this break, though, it's the final match of the night. Don't go anywhere or you'll miss Philadelphia Fusion versus the Houston Outlaws. We'll see you then.